a vacation hot spot, but tonight the City Beautiful becomes a college football happening at the Coors Light Orlando Classic. Tonight the Citrus Bowl plays host to two traditional powers of black college football. At the Coors Light Classic, the Florida a and Rattlers come to town from Tallahassee, led by legendary coach Billy Joe. Joe has been on a Super Bowl winner in the pros. He's won national titles at the college level with Central State of Ohio, and he hopes his Rattlers are ready to strike tonight. On the other hand, Tennessee State coach Bill Davis had some great years at South Carolina State, and in his second year in Nashville, looks to lead the TSU Tigers back to prominence. Davis says a win tonight against Florida a and is essential to getting his season back on track. Also here tonight in Orlando, the Florida A&M Marching 100 rolling in from Tallahassee to jack up the fans. But hey, the fans have been here for hours already. A pregame concert at adjacent Tinker Field has the Tiger and Rattler fans ready to roll for this traditional game tonight at the Citrus Bowl. Welcome live to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. ESPN2 presents CFA College Football out of the Ohio Valley Conference. The Tennessee State Tigers meet the Florida A&M University Rattlers out of the Mideast Athletic Conference. And a pleasant good evening to you, everyone. I'm Tom Mees, along with Mike Mayhawk. Mike, both of these schools have sent so many great players to the professional ranks. And for Florida A&M tonight, keep your eye on a very highly talented linebacker. I'll tell you what, any coach in the country would love, love to have Florida A&M linebacker Earl Holmes. He's 6'2", 230 pounds, runs a 4-5-40, and their whole defensive scheme is predicated on allowing Holmes to go sideline to sideline, and Tommy, he can play. Yes, he can, and of course, he'll be flying to the football tonight. For Tennessee State, yes, they're 0-2, but both those losses by very close margins, 5 and 4 points, and this is a chance that their offense can get on the same page for them, they feel, to come in with, a, with an upset victory. Well, it's great to have senior leadership at quarterback and at Tennessee State they've got Darrell Williams the coaches tell me he's really like having an extra coach on the field and what they need to do is they've got to involve wide receiver Lawrence Segree. Segree had 54 catches a year ago only seven this year they've got to do two things involve Segree and number two they've got to get that running attack going. Jarek Hillary freshman tailback had 132 yards against Jackson State two weeks ago to beat Florida A&M tonight Hillary has got to be involved in that offense. Two of the great powers of black college football, Tennessee State and Florida a and Between them, friends, 22 national championships. We'll meet our sideline reporter, Sam Crenshaw, as we come back to the Citrus Bowl in a moment. ESPN 2's College Football is brought to you by Coors Light. Ship cold to bring you all that is great about the Rockies. Tap the Rockies with Coors Light. And by First Union National Bank. When it comes to service, everything matters. I think next time we should wear the helmets. In my case, the helmet is definitely on. A hot and humid late September evening in Orlando, Florida, where it's still plenty warm. Those of you in the Northeast, how about 75 degrees at 7 o'clock at night? Partly cloudy, wind no factor right now, chance of rain 20%. Let's quickly go down to the sidelines before kickoff. Check in with our man, Sam Crenshaw. Thanks a lot, Tom, and hi, everybody. Let's tell you a little bit about the history between these two historically black rivals. This is the 34th meeting in the series between these two teams, and Tennessee State has won 22 times, one of the few teams with a winning advantage overall over Florida A&M. Even when Florida A&M won the 1AA National Championship in 1978 and finished with a record of 12-1, and Tom, that one loss came to the TSU Tigers. And they've been angry about that, Sam, ever since. And they've dominated this series as of late. Well, Florida A&M Rattlers have won the toss elected to receive back in single safety as Pat Harrington standing at his own five-yard line. Ready for the kickoff from number one, Brian Pruitt. The Coors Light Classic here in Orlando, Tennessee State. Out of the Ohio Valley Conference, our officiating crew is from the OVC tonight. Pruitt gets that right leg into it. Harrington runs back to the one-yard line. Comes back to the middle, and he's dragged down at the 15-yard line. Lemuel Legan was the first man to get him at the 14-yard return, and the Rattlers might start off inside the 20, and there's a look at Damian Slaughter. Slaughter, the quarterback, 5'11", junior. 
out of Vicksburg, Mississippi, along with Slaughter. You'll have Gerald Jackson. Watch out for Kwame Vidal. He's a breakaway running back. Wilson, Bland, and Berry. And the big guys up front, I do mean big, Jamie Nails, 6'7", 377 pounds. Thank you very much. <laughs> An offensive line that averages well over 300 pounds. And here is Kwame Vidal. He struggles ahead for two or three yards on first down. Defensively, for the Tigers of Tennessee State, they play the 46, James Johnson, Jim Lackey, Keith Collins, and Latuan Cook. That's the front four. Play 4-3, I stand corrected. Benny Gaston, Ryan Falker, and Richard Freeman are the backers. And the secondary, Clifford Green, Daryl Hinton, Victor Bonds, and Lamar Parker. You know, Tommy, there's a reason they went off that front left side on the first play. You're going to see a lot of that tonight behind Nails and Billy. High formation for the Rattlers of Florida a and m Damian Slaughter hands up to Vidal, and Vidal, the tailback, is just short of the first down up to the 24-yard line. Kwame Vidal, he's not big, but he is elusive. He's 5'9", 200 out of Miami. Well, he averages almost five yards per carry, Tom, and one thing Coach Bill Davis from Tennessee State told me last night is Billy Joel is no mystery. He's going to come out, and Billy Joel is going to try and run the ball down your throat, and they've got to be able to stop that. And the heavens have opened up there. We said there's a 20% chance of rain. Well, that 20% has fallen all over everybody here at the Citrus Bowl. We don't expect it to last. Vidal trying to pick up the first down. It will depend on the spot. A host of Tennessee State Tigers right there at the 25. And a thunder shower has opened up. You want to talk about effort. Watch from the left side of your screen, the handoff to Vidal. Look, coming right over the top, Richard Freeman from the outside linebacker position. That ball came loose. Watch it. That's a little iso play. He dives right over the fullback, makes the play. Ball looked like it came loose, but we're going to have a first and ten for the A&M Rapids. Ball broke the plane, and I guess they ruled he was down by contact, which you could have fooled me. First and ten for FAMU at the 25. in the eye. Again, it's Kwame Vidal. Got a hole. Vidal over the 40 to the 43-yard line. line. Vidal already this year, Mike, has runs of 80 and 61 yards. Down by Clifford Big Green. hole opens up here on this draw play. Vidal's very quick. Gain of 18 yards on the play. You're going to see on the First right side of your video. screen, right here, hole opens up. Good lead back, but blocked by the fullback. Now watch the free safety right there. Miss the tackle. That's Victor Bond. And because of that, you pick up an extra seven yards. Free safety has to make that tackle. Clifford Green had to cover up for Tennessee State. He made the stop, but not before a first down pickup to the 43. And ride that horse. Kwame Vidal over the 45 to the 46-yard line. <laughs> Tommy, you've got nails at 377. Demetrius Billy at 303 pounds. And you're going to see that sprint draw to the fullback ISO all night. Now there's Jamie Nails. All he is is 6'7", 377 pounds, and we're not kidding. And they tell me, Tom, he's a gospel thing. Yeah, he, uh, he and uh, split end Robert Wilson, number 83 for the Rattlers, uh, do quite well. The heavens are really opening up now. There's Jamie from Baxley, Georgia, where he never missed a meal. Kwame, Kwame Vidal holds on to the ball, picks up about three, and it is just coming down in torrents here at the Citrus Bowl. So, I mean, the fans are running for cover. It was a beautiful day here today, Mike. I hope you put your convertible top up. Nice call on the 20%, Tom. <laughs> it looks like 100% to me. But it won't last long. You know what? So far, we've seen one play from A&M. It's been sprint draw left, ISO, sprint draw right, ISO. Same play five or six times in a row. They want to run the ball right down your throat. Well, they do it very well, and especially on that left side with Nails and Demetrius Billy. And as I say that, Damian Slaughter, his first pass, has the man open. That's Robert Wilson. And he's got a first down around the 40-yard line. Benny Gaston brought him down for Tennessee State. A&M's pass pattern is usually two receivers. What they're going to do is sprint to the right, and both backs are going to block to give him a free corner. Slaughter does a nice job holding on to it until he finds Wilson late on the curl pattern. Boy, it is really opening up now. Let's take a look at Wilson. Watch Wilson. Little combo pattern, two receiver route. He's just going to curl, look for the open spot. Nice job there, both by the quarterback and wide receiver. Well, this will cool everybody off and nothing else. Look at Flamu. They want to go on. Wilson, 40 yards. 
Cards and the Rattlers strike first, six nothing. That was a heck of a throw and a blinding rain storm. Hey, give Billy Joe some credit. They run the ball five or six times when it's dry. It starts to rain. They throw the football, play action. Great call. Coming on to attempt the extra point, Jeff Stevens. As Wilson receives congratulations on the sideline. The hold is a good one, and the kick is good. Damien Slaughter hooked up with Robert Wilson between the raindrops here in Orlando. 40 yards, and the Rattlers strike first. Play action, no free safety in the hole, and when there's no free safety, it's like taking candy from a baby. Tennessee State gets its chance back. In Florida, they call it liquid sunshine. In Florida A&M, it's a sunny disposition right now for the Rattlers. A 40-yard TD pass on their first drive. Slaughter to Wilson. And Florida A&M is getting set to kick off as the rains have abated. I don't think the shower is going to last very long. That's just what Tennessee State didn't want to happen, Tom. They don't, they're, they're not the kind of team that can get behind and score real quickly. They've got to keep this competitive early. Number 24 is Stanley Cook. He is flanked on his right by number 82, Dwayne Moore. Those are the two kick return specialists. There is Moore. Tennessee State, a close loss to Middle Tennessee State. In the first game of the season, 11 to 7, and another close loss to Jackson State. A couple of weeks ago, they're coming off a bye. And the raid has just about stopped. Stevens end over end. It will be short, and it will be returned by Dwayne Moore. Over the 20 to the 26-yard line. That's where Tennessee State will start. Robert Wilson still thinking about this pass he caught. You know, great call. Play action. There's no free safety in the hole. So Robert Wilson's got one-on-one -on -one coverage with Clifford Green. And as you can see, except for having to wait for the ball for a second, Tommy, he had at least three yards of separation. Well, Darrell Williams, the senior quarterback, the lefty, 50% on the year. The rest of the offensive unit for the Tennessee State Tigers in their road blue and white. Wallace, Hillary, Segree, Vassar, and Brown. And the men up front, Pride, Dunham, Jones, Clark, and McGowan. First and 10, Tennessee State at the 25, let's call it. Williams flushed out of the pocket, has to get rid of it, almost intercepted. As it is, it's brought in by Jarek Hillary, the safety valve for no game. Defensively for Florida A&M, keep your eyes on the Rattlers. They are going to play a variation of Buddy Ryan's 46 defense. Michael Thornton, Reggie Lee, Rod Williams, Bennett Hayes. Up front, and four linebackers for the Rattlers. Elder, of course, Earl Holmes, the all-everything out of Tallahassee, Antonio Barrio, and Barry Brown. And three secondary performers, Brooks, Carlos Odom, and Primus Burley. Second down and ten for Tennessee State. The pitch is to Jared Kellery, and the talented freshman is stacked up by this aroused Rattler defense. is in the picture. Earl Holmes will be in the picture all night, Tommy. A reminder, coming up on Sunday, it's NFL game day. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Sterling Sharp, Chris Mortensen of the boys. And Joe Theismann, how can we leave him out? 11.45, Sharp. Yes, the NFL's best pregame show just, just got a little bit better. An hour and 15 minutes, that's Sunday on ESPN. 11.45, third down and 12. Darrell Williams, the screen to Jarek Hillary. Breaks away and picks up the first down. A beautiful call, Mike, as Hillary is at the 41-yard line, brought down by Carlos Odom. Nice job there. He broke the tackle from Antonio Barriol. That's what made the first down happen. Remember, remember, in a screen pass, the line can release downfield. Watch what happens now. Good look there. Now, here comes number 70, Raymond Jones, downfield. Watch the block. Just a little nudge block, but that's all you need right there. You get a good back in the open field. You don't have to kill a guy. Just nudge him. And, of course, uh, Hillary Brink in the tackle attempt of Richard Brooks that time. That really helped him pick up the first down. This running play is not going anywhere for Tennessee State. Loss of about a yard like the Bermuda Triangle in there, Tommy. You got Rod Williams, Reggie Lee, and Earl Holmes. Two defensive tackles and the linebacker. Devon Black, number 22, was the ball carrier. Bring up second down and okay. 10. Black's a converted defensive back. His first game at tailback. Tennessee State 
stepping out of the Ohio Valley Conference to meet their traditional rivals from Tallahassee, Florida and m Everybody going out on this pattern. There is Lawrence Segree. He is double teamed. Drawing special attention that time from the FAMU secondary. Carlos Odom in the area, along with James Gibson, number four. The situation where they anticipated blitz out of the 46, but they ended up in zone. Odom makes a break on the ball, almost had it. Good break on the football by the free safety. Tom, they anticipate blitz. They drop back into a two-deep zone, and uh, quarterback Darrell Williams threw it right into double coverage. Brings up another passing down, third down and 10. The back's in the eye, though, behind Williams initially. And that's where they'll stay. The safety bound to Hillary. Did a nice job to catch it, but will be short of the first down. Run out of bounds by Antonio Barrio. For Florida A&M, it'll be a punt situation for the Tigers. That's a nice job defensively on third and long. They drop back in a two-deep zone, man under. They let the ball get thrown to the back, and then you come up and make the solid tackle, forcing the punt. Good job, Florida A&M. Clifford Green back to punt for Tennessee State. Back to receive the punt for Florida A&M. The deepest of the trio is Jamie Bell. He's standing in his own 13. The rain has stopped. Typical Florida Thunder just pooches one inside the 30 and hopes for a roll and it bounces out right at the 20 yard line that's for florida and m will put it in play with 828 left in the first quarter it is the rattlers seven and the tigers from tennessee state nothing back with more from orlando in a moment that's usually where you see a head football coach on the sidelines, but not for Florida A&M. Their head football coach, Billy Joe, is up in the booth. How did all this happen? Well, this started, uh, of course, in 1981 when I was with Central State playing Eastern Illinois. Darrell Mudra was the uh, head football coach, and he coached from up top. And I thought that was rather bizarre, but after he had scored... 50 plus points at halftime on me uh, I did not think it was so bizarre and I asked him uh, why and he said well coach you get a better perspective on the game and uh, I tried it in 1990 didn't have enough guts to try it earlier but I tried it in 1990 and uh, was very successful with it won a national title and went on to win uh, more national titles and decided to stay up there. A novel idea Mike. Sure is I mean he's the only guy I've seen outside of Mudro that's done that. So Billy Joe is up in the booth. His brother, Jimmy Joe, is the man you saw diagramming plays on that uh, the board. There's Jimmy Joe. Of course, the Joe family has a lot of football players in it. Oh, there's a huge legacy. Uh, they're from Coatesville, Pennsylvania area. Billy Joe played at Villanova. Then he went on to play in the NFL and AFL. His brother, Jimmy, was an all MEAC player. And the best one of the, them all, Tom, he might be a guy nobody ever heard of, his youngest brother, Abel, who ended up with a knee injury and couldn't play college ball. Well, we have a big lightning strike, and the referee has waved his arms and is calling play, a timeout. Play will be suspended. Timeout until the lightning passes. Special time. We'll well, what we got. <laughs> another thunderstorm has moved in, and the rain they can live with, but the lightning they can't. And one of the reasons why is we pan around the stadium. You see that the seats that do not have folks in them, those are metal seats. Those are metal seats, and they don't want to take any chance that anybody will be hurt. Would you, would you define that as a lightning rod up there, Tom? Basically, that's what you have. And for, for anybody who knows anything about weather in Central Florida, this, all summer long at this time of year, this is not this unusual, uh, and it shouldn't last too long. It, uh, but they are going away. You see just off, there's some blue sky just over the one side of the stadium and a big thundercloud on the other side. Well, I was down on the field just prior to kickoff, and you could see the thunderhead coming, but behind it, it I've Hopefully, there's going to be some uh, blue sky, as you can see right there. Well, that 20%, uh, we were talking about. Let's adjust that figure, guys. <laughs> uh, now, one of the guys who's been down here through all this rain tonight, our man Sam, <laughs> Sam Crenshaw. Sam, you staying dry down there? What's going on? Trying to stay dry, Tom. I'm over here on the Tennessee State sideline, and right now it's giving the Tennessee State offense a chance to regroup. The coaches are talking to the players, and they're telling them, hey, we see that we can move the ball on offense, we can complete some passes, and sustain a drive. He's saying that they see some weaknesses possibly in the Florida a and defensive unit, and that's what they're giving them more time, I guess, to figure out and work on during this break. They're pretty busy on this sideline. You know, the thing I don't understand, Tom, is you call a lightning delay the safety of the players yet everybody's just standing around on the field 
Well, if you call lightning delay, don't you take them into the don't you take them in the locker room? The, the people that are in danger here are not the players. They're not sitting on metal seats. I mean, if there's any, you know, they're they are they are they're playing. Uh, and the band plays on. Well, they, they were playing on the bus. That's the Tennessee State Tiger marching band. But, and the referee coming over to talk to the coordinators on the FAMU sideline. You know, we talked about Billy Joe being up in the booth, and it's it's interesting. It's not really as dramatic as people might think because all it is is an inversion of responsibilities. Instead of the coordinators being upstairs, they're downstairs running the team, and there's Billy up there saying, okay, now do I hang out? Do I have time for a coat? <laughs> what am I doing here? Well, he's hunting for some change for a hot dog. <laughs> he's doing. Billy Joe, he, what a checkered career he's had. It. He played his college ball in, in Villanova. He said he was a, a native of nearby Philadelphia. The rain is just pouring down again. Coatesville, Pennsylvania, and then he went on to play in the old American football league. But the thing about him is some people, win winning just seems to follow around. Here's a guy that left Villanova, hooks on with the Jets, and what do they do? They draft Joe Willie and win a Super Bowl. Then he leaves there, goes into college coaching, and everywhere he's gone, they've won. Cheney State, he was an assistant with Dick Vermeil with the 1980 Eagles that lost to the Raiders in the Super Bowl. Then he goes to Central State of Ohio, and that becomes the biggest power in the NAIA college football. I mean, the guy, there's something to him. Everywhere he goes, they win football games. By the way, Central State, the team that Billy Joe used to coach, has a big game tonight against Grambling as Eddie Robinson is trying for win number 399. <laughs> He's at 398 and counting. He lost last week in the big classic up in the Meadowlands. He lost to Hampton. So if he wins tonight, if Grambling can win, that's 399. And then, Tommy, you know who they have next week? The team with the longest losing oh, no. streak. Oh, no. Prairie View. <laughs> or Prairie View. <laughs> well, there's a look at the fan. The, the rain, which had stopped a few moments ago after the lightning strike, of course, the thunder fall, and people are just getting deluged. And uh, some creative ways of trying to stay dry. Now, there's a the guy, Damian Slaughter who doesn't mind playing in the rain. Not the way he's thrown the ball uh, so far tonight. But, Mike, he was not supposed to be the quarterback as this year started. Now, Ray Domingo was his starting quarterback. Well, the whole offense was uh, around Domingo, not Slaughter, so Billy Joe had to revamp his whole offense. Well, of course, uh, we've had to restructure our uh, offensive package. The offensive package initially was designed for Ray, a uh, strictly pro set type offense. Now with Damian uh, at the helm, uh, we've had to put in some plays that would uh, uh, take advantage of his assets and some of his talents and skills. And the rain continues to come down. The good part is that the lightning strikes seem to be over for the moment. I haven't seen any in the last five minutes or so. And we're going to take this uh, chance to catch our breath, pay some bills, and be back to the Citrus Bowl in a moment. Florida A&M continues to lead Tennessee State 7-0. Mother Nature just can't make up its mind. We're all set to play football again, Mike, and now a huge lightning strike, and the referee is not only stopping the game, he's sending the teams to the locker room until this thunderstorm gets out of the area. Bill Davis and his Tennessee State Tigers, they'll have a chance to regroup anyway. <laughs> I didn't even notice the first one, but that was a large one. You could yeah. tell from, even though we're covered up here, boy, you could see that long way away. Well, Bill Davis has had some revamping to do on his own with Tennessee State, hasn't he? Sure has. He's had several players lost to eligibility, and he had this. It's pretty interesting to hear what he had to say. Well, it was kind of difficult. You know, it worked a lot on the players' mind because they had been playing with these guys for three or four years, and uh, they, they came in and made the adjustment. We made the adjustment pretty good, but we still missed their abilities, but, uh, you know, due to unfortunate circumstances, we had to make the adjustment be ready to play football. Well, Tom, those unfortunate circumstances he was talking about was that the week of their first game against Middle Tennessee State, he gets word that four of his starting defensive players and one of his offensive players, and while we're going, let's go right downstairs to Sam Crenshaw. Sam? All right, I'm standing here with Coach Bill Davis, and Coach, this is quite an unusual delay. Um, talk about how it all came to be. Well, you know, as far as the score, you know, uh, we missed the coverage in the secondary, our, our safety. Free safety misses coverage, and 
guy got behind us. But I thought we were playing pretty good football up until we made that mistake. And, you know, with this delay here, I guess we go in, regroup, and come back out and hopefully we can do better, you know, after the break. Let's do your momentum because you guys coming out, you've been waiting all day long to play this game, a 7 well, o'clock start. It, it, both of us are under the same uh, condition, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I mean, it's a team that comes back out with the most and who wanted the most. But I think this might help us to give us a chance, you know, to regroup and to get some things reorganized. Okay, Coach Bill Davis and his Tigers going to regroup, come back out when the weather's a little better. Yeah. And, uh, you, <laughs> Sam, you better you better put down that metal mic and get underneath. Get going, Sam. I'm going inside. Oh. <laughs> Sam Crenshaw, who, one thing we didn't give him here at ESPN2 tonight was an umbrella. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Well, Tom, what we were talking about prior to Coach Davis is the, la the loss of eligibility in week one. And you know what? A coach can handle it if you get told that in May, back before spring ball. But to come into week one, lose four starters on defense, and your best wide receiver on offense, I'm not sure how they were able to handle it and still play as well as they have. Well, as you see, the graphic there is not lying. This is a lightning delay. The only other time I can remember being involved in something like this is uh, in an NFL exhibition game at Tampa Stadium a few years ago. And there, there is a camera inside the Florida A&M locker room as the players and the, the coaches. Well, what do you do, Mike? You ever been involved in a game where you had to leave the field? You played at Boston College. <laughs> you get some nasty weather in New England sometimes. Tom, in New England, we played in everything. Ice, <laughs> snow, rain, you name it. We played in it, but we I never had to play in a lightning storm. I played a lot of baseball, yeah. and I've caddied on a lot of good golf courses, and I'll tell you one thing. As soon as that lightning comes, drop the bags and get to the house. Well, the raindrops are still coming down, as you saw that shot of the sky a few moments ago. The fans haven't left. They're having a good time. And you know what? We're going to have fun late into the night here at the Citrus Bowl. <laughs> Midway through the first quarter, still Florida and m on top. 95, for a short time at the Olive Garden, where generosity is a way of life. Welcome back live to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. If you're tuning in, uh, no, you didn't tune in late. There are a lot of people here, a lot of football players here. We're in a lightning delay. That's the Florida A&M University Rattlers locker room. And they and the Tennessee State Tigers, after playing about a, one half of the first quarter, have been sent to the locker room. Lots of lightning, and the concern is for their safety and the fan safety, Mike Mayock. And this is a bizarre, a regular season game. I've never been in this uh, circumstance before. I, I think the point has to be made that the right choice was made by the referees. The safety ought to be first and foremost in any, everyone's mind, but I've been around football my entire life. My dad was a high school coach. I grew up on the game. I have never in my life ever seen a lightning delay. And the lightning is still circling the stadium. The rain is starting to let up, so hopefully it won't be too much longer before we're back to live action. But the live action we saw, Florida a University took the opening kickoff of this game, drove down the field, uh, having to go over 80 yards to do it, 40 of it in one chunk, Damian Slaughter to Wilson. Now remember, they've been running the ball successfully. Now play action, Slaughter's looking weak side, the free safety bit on the play action. You can see him turning his back and running. He hits Wilson. Touchdown, 40 yards. That's a great play call by Billy Joe. And when you consider that Florida A&M had done a good job running the football to set that up, I thought that Kwame Vidal, we knew he'd carry the ball a lot tonight, and he carried, what, the first four or five plays, and he was picking up significant yardage. Maybe that's one of the reasons why the, the safeties and the corners were, were suckered up there. Well, that's, that's why I think Billy Joe made such a good call. He ran isolation, fullback leading tailback into the hole, six consecutive plays to start the game. Everybody's starting to inch up. The strong safety, the free safety especially, starting to get a nosebleed. He wants to get involved. What happens? Play action touchdown. Well, the rains are beginning to let up, but the, the big thing is the lightning. We hope it goes away and never comes back. We hope we'll be back with some live college football real soon here tonight on ESPN2. We're going to take a break now and go into some other ESPN2 programming. We'll be back as soon as they start playing here in Orlando. Winston Cup races tomorrow. Super trucks tonight. Okay, the lightning has apparently stopped in Orlando, so the Coors Light Orlando Classic ready to return. Let's send you right now back to Orlando, Tennessee State, and FAMU, and rejoin Tom Meads. Tommy. Thanks a lot, Mike Tirico. Tom Meese and Mike Mayock back with you at the Florida Citrus Bowl in Orlando. And, yeah, they did have a big crowd here at one point. We've been through a rain and lightning delay. The teams are back on the field. The officials, we understand, are going to start play in a couple of minutes. In the early part of the game, the first Florida A&M University possession, Robert Wilson hauled in a Damian Slaughter pass. 40 yards and a touchdown. That must have angered the gods because the lightning hit. <laughs> and we've had a 23-minute delay to this point. 
And the delay happening about midway through the first quarter. Before the play resumes, let's check in now with Sam Crenshaw on the sideline. Sam. All right, Tom. We've been dodging the storms and the lightning, too. But the officials came out, said they would give them five minutes to stretch. They've given them that, and now they're back on the field. Looks like we're ready to play some football. Hey, All Sam, right. this is Mike. Were you in either of the locker rooms? I was in the Florida and m locker room. Loose moves. Some of the players put on a Walkman, walked around, <laughs> <laughs> listened to some tunes. You know, I oh. Tom, I really think, thanks very much, Sam. Good job. I really think that this works for Tennessee State. A&M comes out, scores on the first possession, stops Tennessee State, has the momentum going, and all of a sudden a 23-minute delay. I think it gives Tennessee State a chance to regroup and try and get this game going in their direction. Well, when Mother Nature so rudely interrupted our football game, Florida A&M had a 7-0 lead and the football on their own 19-yard line, second down at 11, with 7 minutes, 52 seconds left in the first quarter. And the officials are making sure all the chains and markers are where they should be. The teams have had their stretching, and here we go with live college football tonight on ESPN2. And the fans are beginning to filter back into their seats. Second down and 11 for the Rattlers of Florida a &M. Let's see if some momentum was stalled in that lightning rain delay. That's the workhorse, Kwame Vidal, going out of bounds near the 25-yard line. I'll tell you what, you want to talk about a big guy trying to move a little bit, the left guard, Demetrius Billy, at 303 pounds, they count on him to pull all kinds of plays here. Watch the right side of your screen, number 61, six foot two, 303 pounds, gets the block right there on the linebacker, Freeman. That's a good job by a 300-pound guy having the agility to get around the corner and make a block. Bland and Wilson, double wide receivers to the bottom part of the screen as Slaughter has a third down and about seven. Rolling right and hauling in the pass for what should be a first down at the 32-yard line is number 83, Robert Wilson, the man who caught the 40-yarder for the touchdown. Now, I think the footing is, is going to begin to be, play a, a sort of role here. He's going to sprint to your right. Both backs are going to block. Maximum protection. It's only a two-man route. Now, Wilson is wide open because the strong safety covering him, Victor Bond, slipped and fell on the cut. That's another thing. These two downpours, and we've had two rainy downpours so far in this game. Let's see if they'll have any effect on the turf. This is a very well-draining field under normal circumstances. Kwame Vidal, he's a slippery character over the 35 to the 36-yard line, where he's brought down there by Dwayne Moore. Situation here where Tennessee State's defense needs to step up and make a play. You hate to say any series is a big series this early in the game, but so far, everything's going A&M's way. To the 35-yard line, make it second down and six. Vidal already nine carries, 40 yards. He and Reggie Glover in the eye behind Damian Slaughter. Nowhere for Vidal to go this time. He is bottled up but good. In there for Tennessee State, Ryan Falker, number 51. And let's take a look at Ryan Falker. What he does here is watch 51. Right side of your screen. He's going to run right through. Nobody's going to touch him. He chases the play from the backside and tackles Vidal for a loss. Nice play by Falker. And he leads this team and tackles with 26, 18 of them unassisted coming into this game. Well, the strength of that defense is really with their upfront people and their linebackers, Falker and Freeman. Third and six for Florida AM. Got to get to the 42 yard line. Slaughter, and he bounces it in there to Robert Wilson, who made a nice grab, but this is not baseball. <laughs> Looked like Cal Ripken there for a minute. Two-man route again. It's not a complicated pass offense. I'm not sure why the strong safety, Daryl Hinton from um, Tennessee State, isn't doing a better job getting underneath that curl route. So the Rattlers from Tallahassee have to punt. Back in punt formation is Darren Moore, number 10. And back to receive for Tennessee State, Dwayne Moore, number 82. Wobbly one, Moore signals for the fair catch and lets it bounce and takes it in at the 22-yard line. That's where Tennessee State will put the ball in play. 5-14 left to go here in the first quarter. We've had a lightning delay, but we're back on track now. The Rattlers lead it by seven. <laughs> Welcome back to rainy Orlando, where the fans are starting to venture out to their seats again. Dry them off and sit down with Mike Mayock. I'm Tom Meese. 
two traditional black college football powers going at it on ESPN2 tonight. Tennessee State, Mike, I think with an important series coming up for them uh, starting at their own 23. Yeah, they really feel like they've got to be able to run the ball with Hillary. There's Bill Davis right there. He told me last night they've got to be able to run the football, control the clock a little bit, and keep FAMU off the field. First and 10 for the Tigers. I don't know what the further delay is here. The official signal both sides ready for play, and here we go. There's a look at Earl Holmes. I guess the best thing a head coach can say is he will play on Sundays next year. <laughs> the toss to the freshman. That is Jarek Hillary, and he is cut down near the line of scrimmage. First to get him is Barry Brown, number 43. You know, that brings up an interesting point. Barry Brown is an outside linebacker, but he's a former strong safety. So in this 46 defense, Brown, number 43, and Elder, number 23, are both former safeties. They've got to be able to cover, and they also have to be able to pursue against the run. He did a nice job on that play. Some blitz. Second down and 10. No gain on that pitch, and Williams, the quarterback, hangs on to it. And for negligible, negligible results, Bennett Hayes was right on his tail. You know, Bennett Hayes is having a nice year, and the main reason is because the two inside tackles, Rod Williams and Reggie Lee, are being double-teamed an awful lot. Bennett Hayes has got some great numbers. Watch the penetration here. They're trying to run option. Bennett Hayes does a nice job feathering pitch and then making the tackle. They call it third down at 11 for Tennessee State. Rather angry looking young man you just saw, Bennett Hayes. Williams with plenty of time, out to the flat. And for not much gain up to the 27, 28 yard line, he got the ball out there to Devon Black and he's brought down by Brown. You know, Tom, what A&M is doing is on third and long, they're going into a two-deep zone, and they're allowing them to complete the ball underneath. End zone, drop back pass here. Williams has, no, look at the zone down there. He has tight end if he wants it, but that's only about an eight-yard pass, so he drops it off in the flat. You come up and make the tackle. Good job right there, but you got to make the tackle, force the punt. Lamar Wallace was the receiver there. I stand corrected. Here's the punt by Clifford Green. Signaling fair catch, and that's a risky thing to do with these wet conditions. Jamie Bell, but he hangs on to it, and great field position for the Rattlers up near their own 45-yard line. That was not a good punting effort by Clifford Green. Now, the field position now comes into play. The game is slowly tilting towards A&M right now. Damian Slaughter comes back in after having a conference with the coordinators on the field. Again, the head coach, Billy Joe, he coaches from up in the press box. And tonight, he's probably very glad of it. <laughs> there he is. There's Billy. He's dry. See, he's going to go down to halftime, see his assistants, and say, what, what are you guys doing all wet? Slaughter, rolling right. Got to take it and go, and he's out of bounds. Back at the 41, a loss of about four on the play. Running him out was Lamar Parker. Their pass offense is generally a sprint out towards the two receiver side. It basically, Tom, cuts the field in half and should allow the defensive backs from Tennessee State to get real involved. They've got them outnumbered three or four to two on the strong side. Starting to rain a little bit harder now, but the good news is haven't seen the lightning around for a few minutes. Careful what you what you say there, Tom. I'm gonna kiss it that way. <laughs> Second down, about 13, and a fumbled snap. That could also happen with these field conditions. Fortunately for FAMU, Slaughter covers it up. You know what happens is when a quarterback anticipates blitz, he tries to pull away more quickly. He reads pre-read his blitz. He's pulling away, but doesn't have the football. Meanwhile, Doug Austin, the center, who <laughs> guy out of Orlando, he's blocking people. He doesn't know what's going on behind him. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got to hang on to that snap. Well, I hate to call it the tools of ignorance because that's another sport, but those big offensive linemen, man, they're just blocking and getting out of the way. Third down and 14. And the give is to Vidal, trying to cross up the Tennessee State defense, and he pulls it off. First down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Victor Bonds was in the area, but Vidal slipped. Second time they've run the play, Second time they've gained over 15 yards. It's just a nice draw play. Everybody's anticipating pass. 
back split. There's the handoff inside, and here's the key block right there. The fullback Glover makes the block on Freeman. That allows Vidal into the secondary, and Tommy, he can flat out fly. Tommy Vidal out of Miami, Florida. 17-yard gain, now 57 yards in the contest, and he'll add about two more here. Brought down by Daryl Hinton, the freshman out of Chattanooga, after a gain of a couple. But think about it. That's his 12th carry, and we still have almost two minutes left in the first quarter. It's exactly what the Tennessee coach, the state coaches told me last night. They want to run the football, and they're going to see Vidal until you can prove you can stop him. Well, Vidal came into the game with 320 yards on the season through three games. That includes one against the Miami Hurricanes, and he could be just the 6,000-yard rusher in Florida A&M University history. He's on track to reach that goal, and here's Vidal again. Wrapped up at the 30-yard line, another first down. Bringing him down there was Victor Bonds. 10-yard game. You know, when you run option in this kind of offense, your wide receivers have to block people. Down the field, you'll see Bland and Wilson doing a good job. And when you get a back like Vidal with blocking downfield, you know you're going to make the first down. That's a good job by both wide receivers blocking for their tailback. Nearing the one-minute mark here of this first quarter. 7-0 Florida and m trying to add to it. Vidal again. Boy, they ride that horse until they can't go anymore. Vidal down to the 26-yard line. Victor Bonds again on the tackle. Big hit by the fullback, Reggie Glover, running the isolation. Vidal's going to be right behind big number 29. Look at the hit in the hole right there. The fullback Glover gave him a sliver of daylight. Look at the hit on Freeman. Wow, that's, that's the definition of smash mouth football right there. Isolation play, fullback on linebacker. Freeman's still got a healthy piece of the ball carrying the way by. It's well of history. For five yards downfield. Yes, Vidal inside the 25. Freeman had him around the ankles. Out of the 23-yard line, also Falker on the play. Now remember the sequence, the first series. They ran ISO, 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 and then play action for a touchdown. We've just seen ISO, ISO, ISO. If it comes through, it's third and two or three. If I'm Tennessee State, I'm thinking run. This might be a nice play action situation. That is the end of the first quarter here at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. The Coors Line Classic. Bill Davis, Tennessee State Tigers, down 7-0 to Florida A&M. And the Rattlers are rolling toward the Tennessee State goal line again. Let's see if the Tigers have an answer for this drive. We come back to Orlando in a moment. Florida A&M on top by a touchdown. And auto racing fans, a gentle reminder that every Sunday night is the place to tune into ESPN2 for RPM tonight. Kenny Bain is your host. He'll have NASCAR, Formula One, super truck results, anything for the world of auto racing. That's an RPM tonight, every Sunday night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific time. Big down here for Florida A&M. And the give is to Gerald Jackson. He turns the left corner, and he's down. Inside the five, Jackson takes it to a first and goal. Lamar Barker saved a touchdown. 19 we talked earlier about Demetrius Billy, the left guard, number 61. Watch him pull out, hook block right there, keeps running. Mm. He gets two people, allows Jackson into the open field. Here he comes now, Demetrius Billy, 303 pounds. There's one guy getting away of somebody else. Ooh. <laughs> Victor Bonds. <laughs> Victor Bonds hit the wrong guy. Yes, he did, and he's still uh, maybe feeling it. First and goal from the five. Uh-oh. Fumble. Fumble on the play. Tennessee State picks it up, and this could be a touchdown. Oh, my goodness. There goes Clifford Green. He's gone. Touchdown, Tennessee State. <laughs> Clifford's tired. Look at him. Clifford almost didn't have enough gas to make it in, Tommy. But he did. He made it in on fumes, and we have a chance for a tie. There's Anthony Curry, the defensive coordinator from Tennessee State. And look at Billy Joel. I mean, you want to talk about a change in everything in a football game. There it is. Bumble on the handoff, Mike. Slaughter was trying to make an exchange there, I believe. And it looked like it was going to pick up some decent yardage, and Clifford Green saw that loose pigskin, and 94 yards later, he's in the end zone. <laughs> Definitely not a smooth exchange at the mesh point. And to attempt the extra point is Brian Pruitt. Check that, Patrick McFall, McFall number 30. Pruitt handles the kickoffs, McFall the extra points. 
Good snap. The kick is up and through. And early in the second quarter, Tennessee State had tied this up. Let's see if we can see if it's a clean exchange. It's a stretch play. It's a, it's a clean exchange. It was just the hit by Richard Freeman, number 42. Alertly picked up by Clifford Green. And the only question I have is he's got to beat Slaughter. Does he have enough left to get into the end zone? ESPN 2's College Football is brought to you by the Olive Garden Restaurant. Come in and enjoy the good, fresh food you love. Only at the Olive Garden Italian Restaurant. And by the Florida Department of Citrus. Florida orange juice. Are you drinking enough? Well, there's a look at a tired but a very happy young man for Tennessee State. That is Richard Freeman. He's been blocked a fairly well tonight, but he got revenge just a few moments ago. And we'll show you why. And <laughs> there is the hero of the hour in Nashville, Tennessee right now, Clifford Green, who signals to Mr. Pruitt, his kickoff man, let her rip. And he does in the end zone, and Harrington will cover up for the touchback. Let's take another look at that 94-yard fumble return. It's a clean handoff between Slaughter and Jackson. The play is made right there. Freeman strips the football. The ball's loose. Great bounce, a little Sunday hop into Clifford Green. Now, Mike, he's a punter. He ought to be in decent shape. He should have no trouble going 94 yards. <laughs> did, did, did you see him after the kickoff? He was the guy that stands there with his hands up. He didn't move a yard. He's still tired. Of course, he's also the punter and, of course, a member of the secondary. I'll tell you one thing. If, if I'm Billy Joe, I might go right back at him. He's a cover corner. I might go right back and run a deep route because he just ran 94 yards. Touchback will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Billy Joe still looks in shock over what he has seen. The total yards are not even close, but that's why the the ball bounces peculiar ways, and uh, you can have scores seven seven like this. It, that's a, it's a minimum 10 point and probably a 14 point turnaround because a and is going to get at least a field goal if not a touchdown, but instead we get seven the other way. And catching his breath is Richard Freeman. Oh, how he loads those TV timeouts now. 14-18 to go on the half, just starting the second quarter from Orlando. Florida A&M right back to the offensive attack, and here's that man again, Kwame Vidal. Vidal is hit early and brought down for no gain. It's amazing how one play can change the whole tempo of a football game. Tennessee State's fired up now. A tie ball game and a chance to win the field position battle. Freeman is one of those Tennessee State Tigers in on that tackle. Second down and ten. Green has stopped. Let's hope all the other stuff has too. Vidal now 16 of 20 carries. 20 rushing plays tonight for Florida and F. And Vidal is caught behind the line of scrimmage this time and brought down near the 15 yard line. That's not Vidal, I'm sorry, Gerald Jackson. No, that's Vidal. Or Vidal, I'm sorry, that's a Freeman making the tackle. My oh my, what a difference a possession makes, huh? Out of nowhere, they put formation into the sideline that time and tried to run toss sweep short side. It did not fool Freeman. Ball mark back at the 18 yard line, a third down and 12 situation. And look, the quarterback, Slaughter, is turning to the Florida and band saying, be quiet. <laughs> they're drowning out his own huddle. Tom, they're in one back set. You don't see this very often now. You've got two wide receivers to the field. They're motioning to three wide receivers. Here comes the sprint that way. Slaughter loads the time. Gets it off to Wilson, the hero of the first offensive series. But wait a minute. Was he out of bounds? Yes, he's out of bounds to the 26-yard line. So short of the first down, and a punt will ensue. You know, that's, that's just good defense. They motion right there, creating trips. You know you're going to sprint that way. Don't let them throw the ball far enough down the field for a first down. You've got to extend out in the flat a little bit more and make sure he's out of bounds. Good job by Darrell hitting the freshman safety. Aaron Ford gets the snap. He'll punt it away for Florida A&M. Dwayne Moore in single safety for Tennessee State at the 42. And he is buried. And the football's on the ground. Who's got it? He walked right into a storm. Still no indication for the officials. The officials are acting like he retained possessions on the bottom. They were just they weren't even trying to scramble for the football, so they retained possession. Well, they should have signaled, frankly, but they did not. There's the catch and a good hit. That ball's definitely loose, but it's picked up by number 
Falker. 51 Falker, I think. Yeah, Ryan Falker saved the day for Tennessee State. So out of all this, Mike, the best field position for the Tigers tonight. One big turnover, and we've got a completely different complexion to the game. First and 10 at their own 43. Lawrence Segree in motion. Darrell Williams buying time. And he has Segree at the 38 yard line, or does he? They say he did not get one foot in. I thought he did. But the officials say Segree was out of bounds. Now, Tommy, if you can see that from here, you got better eyes than I do, pal. Well, let's see. <laughs> Left handed. Throwing right down the sideline. Now Sabree's the senior. Let's see what happens. Certainly looks in from here. Nope. 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 Didn't, well, a, a, he didn't have possession, and B, no feet and bound. I need a new prescription on these glasses. <laughs> There's our offensive coordinator, Darwin Valentine. My apologies to the officiating crew. <laughs> Second down and ten. Williams on the play action. Flushed out. And it looks like he was brought down by his old man. Center Raymond Jones, number 70 in white, actually had his arms around the quarterback. <laughs> I know I saw that. <laughs> so you called that right. He steps up into the pocket. Williams does. Watch the right side of your screen. He steps right, <laughs> right on Raymond Jones' toes, and Raymond's going to pull him down. You Good know? tackle. Raymond's now in the stack book, Tom, on the defensive side for unassisted tackle. He's lucky he didn't get a face mask to move. <laughs> Third down and eight. Bill Davis, I don't think he believes what he's seeing. In that play. The draw play. The give is to Jared Hillary, and FAMU has that snuffed out for no gain up at the 45. Now, Earl Holmes was all over that one, Tom. Big old number 45. Drops back, sees it, reads it. He's going to run right by the block of Jones. Bang. Tackle. Barriel and home. No problem. Been a rough couple of plays for one Raymond Jones. Let's not forget that young man with 16 tackles tonight becomes the career leader in the history of Florida A&M. Well, Clifford Green, who ran 94 yards with a fumble a few moments ago, is back to punt for Tennessee State. Fair catch is made by Florida A&M's Darren Porter, Jamie Bell, I should say. Jamie Bell back at the 10-yard line. 10.59 left to go here in the first half. We're tied at 7. Those young men and women have been moving like that since 7 o'clock this morning, and they love it. That's the Tennessee State Marching Band, and uh, the fans love it, too. They've been, I'm telling you, they're all over Orlando having a good time. Hey, spend an hour with a babe, and your life will be changed forever. I'm talking about the fabulous sports babe on ESPN2, Monday through Friday at 1 o'clock. Don't hurt me, Tommy. No, Don't let, hurt me. Hey, got into my rental car down here. <laughs> Turn on the radio. The babe is on the radio. First time out. Don't hurt me, Tommy. She's everywhere. Let's get back to football. First and 10, Florida and m at their own 10. Tie game at 7. I just, that was what the copy said. I didn't make that up. Slaughter rolling to his right. And bounces one in at the 18-yard line, or did he? Robert Wilson did a heck of a job scooping that up off the turf for about a 9-yard gain. I'll tell you one thing. The Tennessee State linebackers and safeties have to do a better job expanding to the sideline. The sprint out is wide open every play. Nice it's job. It's a catch so far. That's right. Yeah. That's a good job by Wilson. But my point is that every time they get into that two-wide receiver formation and sprint that way, they're telegraphing it. You've got to expand out underneath the cover. Wilson to the top of the screen. Tony Bland to the bottom on second and two. That means it's Vidal time. Look at him scoot and skitter. Bobby Vidal first down at the 25-yard line. James Johnson running down. You know, some backs just have an innate feel for how to run a football. And he makes, Kwame Vidal makes a great cut right in the middle of the hole. It looks like there's nothing there. Watch the cut right here. Bang, right back across the green, and you pick something up where nothing exists. For Vidal now, 18 rushes, 82 yards. And over 320 yards coming into tonight's game on the season. Slaughter. Front uses him, and Slaughter tiptoes out of bounds near the 40 for another 
at Florida a and first down. Tommy, you called that right. Tight end Ryan Berry did a nice job getting out of the pattern and turning into a blocker. Berry's a big blocker, too. 6'4", 270. This is a bootleg. It's called naked bootleg because there's no guard out in front. Rather than throwing the ball to Berry, he gets behind the big fella, allowing Slaughter into the open field for a first down. You know who was mismatched that time as you take a look at Slaughter up close? Daryl Hinton was the strong safety that had to take on Barry. A little side differential. 6'4", 270 on about 170. First and 10 for Florida a and Kwame Vidal up the middle to the 46-yard line. It doesn't look like he's making a lot of yardage, but he just picks it up in chunks. Tommy averages five yards a carry, and you can see they push the pile, and he does a great job cutting in the hole. Now, if I'm Billy Joe sitting up here with the same vantage we have, I like to sprint back to the field because Tennessee State is just not getting out underneath the out routes or the curl routes. They give him almost seven yards. That's Jimmy Joe, offensive coordinator for Florida A&M University, brother of head coach Billy Joe. Slaughter got mixed up in the exchange, but it works out okay. Over midfield, that should be enough for a first down. Kwame Vidal must be living right. Latuan Cook brought him down. Little exchange problem on the draw. Three wideouts, no tight end. Bang, they almost look at the fumble. He picks it up. The cut in the hole. I'm very, very impressed by Kwame Vidal. Great lateral quickness in the hole. And the Florida A&M University marching 100, which really is over 300 in attendance tonight. A look at the first down differential. Hey, A&M has dominated the football game, but it's still 7-7. Seven seven. Eight and a half minutes to go here in the first half from Orlando. Kwame Vidal. Relentless. Vidal turns up another eight yards. Victor Bonds lands on top of it. And Keith Collins got him around the ankle. Now you just keep run, riding the big horse. Vidal's moving the football. Defensive coordinator there, Anthony Curry. You know, at this point, Tom, what he's got to do is he's got to bring probably eight people up and take a chance. Second and four is a great play action situation. But now with that run and even 100 yards tonight, Slaughter again bumps into one of his running backs and is fortunate to hang on. He stopped just short of the first down. Richard Freeman stopped him about the 40-yard line. I asked Billy Joe yesterday if they run a lot of option, and he said, no, we don't really run it. Damian can run it, but we would much rather just feature it two or three, four times a game and force other teams to prepare for it. Just a nice changeup. Billy Joe, who got the ideas, in case you tuned in late, from coaching upstairs, Daryl Mudra, coached at Florida State, and later, of course, with Eastern Illinois. Mudra, I believe, was the first coach to ever do that. And play. the first wave and he's run out of bounds at the 25 it'll be another first down now they say he stepped out at the 28 victor bonds is in the area here comes the blitz right here once they seal the corner good block by the fullback jackson on the corner and vidal gets outside pushed out of bounds by victor bonds watch the intensity right here bounces it outside and with his four or five speed they're not going to catch him inside out good job by kwame vidal First and 10 for the Rattlers at the Tennessee State 28. But Al, looking over the defense, he knows he's going to get it. And so does Tennessee State as Freeman brings him down, and they can't do anything to stop him. Freeman and Cato Smith, number 49. Now that little draw play has been the most successful play in their arsenal so far. Watch the big fella, Jamie Nails. 6'7", 377, sets up for pass, and now once he gets his hands on you... <laughs> <laughs> James Johnson, you do not have a chance on that play. It's hard to turn the big fella. And the officials are waving for the clock to stop. And the reason for that is because Florida a has called their first timeout. Kwame Vidal had a bit of an equipment problem. He wants to get that fixed. So the Rattlers stopped the clock with 6.34 left to go here in the first half. Florida a is dominating this game in every way, shape, and form except for one stat, the scoreboard. That's where Tennessee State has tied them up. I think we've seen that building a few
few times before in the last few months. That is the Arena, the Orlando Arena. I think that'll rename it the Shack, because that's where he hangs out. <laughs> How do you spell that? S-H-A-Q. Shack. Only one way. And unfortunately, for the NBA fans, the players have approved their labor deal. No strike or lockout in pro basketball. Well, there's no strike in the Florida AM backfield. Kwame Vidal has shown up for work and working overtime. Up to 23 carries. We still have 634 left in the half. I'll bet you out of those 118 yards, 80 of them have come on draw. And Vidal, who called the timeout to get an equipment problem fixed, is still fiddling around with his helmet. When you're, when you're on this kind of a roll, they'll stop the game for you, see? They're not going to rush you. Look at that. Florida and m on this drive. Remember, it started back in their own ten. <laughs> Look at the big guy, Dale. You know, there's quite a legacy at this left tackle position. The last two tackles, left tackles at A&M, have been drafted. Last year, Jamie Brown was a fourth-round pick by Denver. He's still there. And before him, Terry Buford was drafted by San Diego and now plays with Shreveport. And, Tommy, they think this guy's got a great chance to play on Sunday because he's 370 pounds. They do really, yeah. And he's got some pretty good feet for a guy that big. Well, of course, Florida and m NFL products coming out of the school. Bob Hayes, Ken Riley, Hubert Dixon, Nate Newton currently playing for the Cowboys. Gene Atkins playing down the road for the Dolphins. Okay, Glenn Edwards. That's right. Pretty good defense back. That's just a, a handful. Second down and five. Guess who? Bobby Vidal tackled at the 11-yard line. Bringing him down there, Lamar Barker. Yeah, as if this offensive line doesn't have to get any bigger. They averaged 320. That was their jumbo set. Double tight, and they're coming right at you. 36 Jackson with the iso block. Great block on the linebacker. And Vidal just makes the move. That's just a great job. Now watch the left side. Billy, good block. There's the double team right there at the point of attack. Keep running, keep moving. That's what final coach with the Giants, Bill Parcells, called pushing the pile. Anthony Curry, defensive coordinator. First and ten, just outside the ten. Demetrius Billy trying to give a hold of Vidal. That time it didn't work as Billy got stood up on the double team. And it'll be second down at about ten. This is where if you're a defensive coordinator, you're saying, oh, man, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. All-out blitz, I've got to go man-to-man -man in the secondary. I need another one of those fumbles. That's what I need. Well, I'll tell you what, you have Robert Wilson and Tony Bland out there running pass patterns this whole drive. i got to figure, they got to figure in this drive before it's over. I think you're right. If I'm that guy right there, Anthony Curry, I'm the defensive coordinator. Last night, he told me the first thing they've got to do to win the football game is stop run. And so far, that hasn't happened. Boy, well, the jumbo package, or part of it, is back in there next to tight end Edward Davis. He's lined up to the left. The starting tight end buries to the right. And here they come. This time, good penetration by the Tigers. And not this time. Clifford Green runs Vidal out for a loss. Good job here by Green, number 15. You'll see me. The bounce outside is a great job. Now watch the closing speed right here. Clifford Green takes the corner away. That's a great job by two people. Benny Gaston forcing the punch out, and then Clifford Green chasing him down. Now both wide receivers back in for Billy Joe. Wilson and Bland go to the top of the screen. A third down and 12. Here comes sprint out that way. Locking adequate. Slaughter and Joe, but well out of bounds for Robert Wilson. He just threw that away, and Florida a and is in field goal range. And here comes the field goal kicker. I'm not sure if he threw that away or if it was just a poor pass, because there was some separation between Wilson and the corner there, who I think was Daryl Hinton. Field goal kicker for the Rattlers is Jeff Stevens. The ball should be set down at the 22-yard line, angle to the left, a 32-yard attempt. We'll see his record this year. Third kick of the season for Stevens. And the kick is blocked. It is blocked and rolling around. Stevens tries to pick it up. <laughs> And he is down by contact, so the play will end at the 25-yard line. Again, Tennessee State with a big play to keep this game even. Twice in the red zone, 
and they've come away minus seven. How's that for a stat, Tom? Ben One on a fumble. That's right. Two times inside the 10-yard line, and A&M is minus seven. Watch Gaston right up the middle. This ball's kicked a little bit low. It's Gaston, and I think also Coleman might have gotten a handle on that. Kevin Coleman. Good job. So Tennessee State is living right. Takes over at the 25-yard line. And here is the freshman running back, Jarek Hillary. Hillary up over the 30 near the 35, and near the first down. Again, the block field goal. Watch the two guys right in the middle of your screen. You get a push on the up front people. This is the best way to block a field goal. Right there. Good job, Gaston. That's a good look at it. The push from the up front people, and then the elevation from the linebackers. Gaston got it all. And on the first down run, Jarek Hillary got eight. <laughs> And he's gotten all the yards for Tennessee State. <laughs> that was their first half highlight right there. The up man took the handoff and is met summarily at the line of scrimmage by Antonio Barrio. It's a good hit by Barrio. Watch the slice. Nobody touches him. Big hit two yards deep, and that creates a third and about three or four. Lamar Wallace was the unfortunate running back who met head up with Antonio Barrio, a senior out of Miami got to account for him on every running play. Third down and three. NC State just wants to keep a drive going for a while. Keep the ball out of Van oh. hands. And this is going backwards. Dal Williams in trouble. Handed it off. And Bennett Hayes said, ha, ha, ha. I got me a running back. You're going to see all kinds of people going the wrong way on that play. Try to run option. They left the quarterback out to dry there, Darrell Williams. He wants to run option. Nobody's there. The tailback went the wrong way. That's what happens when you play a freshman. Every once in a while, they can make good things happen, but they make the mental mistake also. Well, it's three and out again for Tennessee State. Green has trouble with the snap, but Florida and was setting a return, so he'll get the kick away and gets a good roll. It'll be down inside the Florida AM 30 yard line with three minutes and one second left to go here in the second quarter. Bennett Hayes, he was in the Tennessee State backfield. Clifford Green drops the football. You know what? He could have run this for about, he might still be running as a matter of fact. Nobody near him, everybody turning around for the return. Fortunate break for Tennessee State. It remains a 7 7 football game. No shoving. There's a look. There's a look at Florida a and defensive unit. Another three and out series for Tennessee State. They play the 46 defense. We talked with Billy Joe yesterday about that D. Well, uh, we play primarily the, the Buddy Ryan type uh, 46. Uh, I've known Buddy for the last 30 some odd years and had a lot of conversations with him about it. But uh, we do have a lot of uh, variety and diversity with uh, the 46. So uh, sometimes it will look like a 46, sometimes it will not look like a 46. But if it's effective, we'll call it a 46. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of variations to the 46, and tonight what we've seen is the true 46 on rundown, and then they've dropped back into a soft zone on pass down. Thank goodness for Billy Joe. His defense is playing well. His offense is motoring well, too, but uh, some weird things have happened tonight. This is the 40th offensive play for Florida a and Tennessee State has had 15 plays the entire half. And a late flag is coming in, and this should be interference against Benny Gaston at about the 37-yard line. But 40 plays to 15, and you're no better than even in the game. If you're Tennessee State, you're sitting there just saying, how many bullets can we continue to dodge? This is the kind of game that makes you nervous. And defensive pass interference, this defense, spot foul, automatic first half. You know, Tom, this is the type of situation... Bill Davis has got to be saying, boy, we're lucky to be in it. But on the flip side, if you're A&M, you're saying, we've outplayed these guys every way, and it's only 7-7. Seven to seven. That would make me nervous. Very strange things happening in this game. A 94-yard fumble return for a touchdown by Tennessee State. A blocked field goal by Tennessee State. Missed opportunities have a way of coming back to haunt you late in game. First and 10 for FAMU up at the 39-yard line. Carpet they just checked off. Let's go. Slaughter's got a hurry and they bury him back at the 30-yard line. Landing on top of Slaughter. 
Number 61, Maurice Dunham. I think Freeman got to him first, though, on the blitz on the corner. Now, remember... And Slaughter's not getting up right now. He's played a fine game tonight running that offense. Mario Allen, the backup, is getting ready to come in. Damian Slaughter is in a lot of pain. Remember, we told you it was a blitz. Correctly caught, checked off. He looked for a slant pattern right from the right side. Right there is Gaston. Watch the leg. Oh, right there. Oh, oh boy. Boy. I hate to tell you what that reminds me of. He's in some pain. But I'm, I, Tommy, I'm thinking back to Lawrence Taylor and Joe Theismann. That, that's, as, that's as bad as it gets right there. An ugly, ugly scene. There is Mario Allen, Billy Joe, who already has had to revamp his offense once this year with Ray Domingo out with a preseason shoulder injury, a rotator cuff. Now Damian Slaughter, his junior, is in a lot of pain. Oh, boy. I don't want to look at the replay. I'm not... Turn away. Oh, man. That's... That's the downside of this game, Tom. It's a, it's a great game, and you learn a lot of things about life, but it's also a brutal game. Oh, they're, they're testing his knee right now for interior damage, and that's painful. I, I've had five knee operations, and I can tell you right now what they're doing is painful. They're trying to check ankle or knee right now. So Damien Slaughter, his number is on tonight. Basically, he's been handing off to Kwame Vidal, but... Remember, he had that 40-yard touchdown pass in the game's first series to Robert Wilson. He is gone. Mario Allen now, the senior out of Dallas, Texas. 6'2", 206-pounder. Has, has not thrown a football no. all year. And remember, in truth, Tom, he's your third quarterback. He yes. lost Domingo. Look Slaughter's coming. Hey, how about this, huh? Boy, well, I, I can't tell you how happy I am for the young man to walk off the field like that. Whether he can play any more tonight wow. is inconsequential. I'm just happy to see he's walking. Oh, that's a moral victory right there. That, boy, is that something. Well, you know what? If I'm Mario Allen, I look back there to number 21 and say, it's your show, pal. It's been your show all night. Let's see what happens. Second down and 19. Over the 40-yard line. Let's check in with Sam Crenshaw. All right, Tom, here on the sidelines. You can see they're working on Damian Slaughter. We're seeing a sprained knee right now. They're going to work on him, treat it during the halftime. They're hopeful that he can return to play in the second half. Boy, that's something. All right, Sam, thanks. That would be remarkable, wouldn't it? Sure would be. And I'll tell you, they just did a smart thing on that first pass. Second and 19. Don't try and get it all back, especially with a quarterback brand new in the game. You let him throw a short route, you get half the yardage back, and now you've got a third and eight, a makeable distance. 11 yards on that first dart to Robert Wilson. Allen looking that way again. Wilson has it again. First down, Florida and Evan on ball. situation Wilson completely turned around the linebacker who was trying to cover him which was Benny Gaston there's the throw no one anywhere near now watch him he's going to look for a block as he cuts across the field watch the blind side hit by Tony Bland right bang oh. <laughs> that's on Lamar Barker and that when, when you're a wide receiver watch this hit get your head in front bang when you're a wide receiver, you just pray for that kind of opportunity. Robert Wilson now, seven receptions, 112 yards on the night. Mario Allen on the pump fake. Dunks it off for Vidal and just overthrows him. Boy, Mario Allen's making things happen out there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that last hit energized the crowd. Oh, the crowd was into that. And a Tennessee State player is down. We believe it's number 99, Michael Thompson. 
Reserve defensive end, freshman out of Savannah, Georgia. Michael Thompson's an important player for them, though. He started a couple of times. He's been a Division I recruit. Georgia Tech and Tennessee wanted him badly. Watch 99 right there in the middle of your screen. Here comes the hit on his left hip. Mm. And he's jumping, grabbing the left knee. Let's hope it's no more than a bruise or a Charlie horse. Yeah. Mario Allen, meanwhile, has come in, hasn't played all year. He's two for three, 35 yards. Thank you. And electrified the crowd. The big hit to Mario Allen. Meanwhile, Michael Thompson being helped off the field. They'll check him out on the Tennessee State sideline with 1.49 to go in the half in a 7-7 game. And don't ask me how Florida a is not way ahead in this one. <laughs> but if you're Tennessee State, you've got to be saying it's 7-7. We've got the third team quarterback in. Coming up at halftime, the GMAC halftime report. Mike Tirico and the gang coming up on ESPN2. Get you caught up with all the other college and football action around the country. And coverage. No free safety. And Mario Allen took a little bit too long to survey the defense. He had the same free read I did. There was no free safety in the hole. He knew that both corners were in man coverage. He was trying to check out and get a new play. Offense. Bill, second down. That'll march it back to the 38-yard line. Robert Wilson comes over for a channel to sidelines while the ball is marked for play. Okay, you've got second long. Here's a situation to try and get about half of it back. You don't need to get all 15 right away. I think you're going to see either draw or sprint out here. Draw or sprint this way. Second and 15 from the 38. From the shotgun, Allen. Pressure dragged down back at the 48-yard line as Tennessee State came and came again. Ryan Falker in on that tackle. Well, one, one thing you should notice right away, the two guys in on the sack are both linebackers. They're bringing blitz, they're bringing it heavy, and that's an intelligent move by Curry. Shotgun, bad snap, good job by handling, but here come the linebackers, both of them. Falken and Gaston. That means you're bringing six and seven people, and with a third-team quarterback, I'd be doing the same thing. Michael Thompson rushes back into the game. Latuan Cook is out, so Thompson's okay. Third down at 25. He wants a chance to rush the passer here. Draw. But he won't get it, because there goes Pommy Vidal. They call him Swivel Hips, and I can see why after tonight, but even Vidal couldn't pick up the first down on that try. He's about 12 or 13 yards short. And Florida and ms Darren Ford will be in the punt. Vidal's had a huge first half, mostly on this play here, draw. Good lead back by, blocked by the fullback right there. He makes the cut outside, missed tackle by Freeman, and then it's Vidal to the sideline. Let's see if Ford tries to pin Tennessee State in that coffin corner. Well, he punches it down the middle of the field, gets a Tennessee State bounce. And it will roll dead. Somebody better down it for FAMU up at the 22-yard line. And Tennessee State will have the ball. 44 seconds on the clock. And three timeouts to work with. And a lot can happen in 44 seconds, Mike, with three timeouts. <laughs> Plenty of time. The question is here, how aggressive does Coach Davis want to be right here? We're going to find out, I think, on first down. Yeah, I'm interested to see what he does here. 44 seconds. The Three timeouts, but a long way to go. It's not play action. The give is to the freshman, Jarek Hillary. Hillary rumbles her first down yardage to the 37. Now, Carlos Odom came up with the football, but they're going to say he was down. Now, that should change the philosophy of Coach Davis. He was ready to run the clock out right there. But you pick up 15 or 18 yards on first down, and you call the timeout. Now you're thinking field goal. Ball over the 35 to the 37, and Bill Davis, of course, he uh, was at South Carolina State for many years, had a rather notable linebacker there by the name of Harry Carson. Not a bad football player. And that Hillary run, can you believe it, Mike? The second first down of the half for Tennessee State. Seven to seven. The, the numbers are staggering. Look at, look at Coach Davis. I mean, Tennessee State, by the scoreboard count, has under 40 yards in total offense. And they're, they're in a game where the opponent is cruised up and down the field and it's 7-0. This is the kind of game if you're the favorite and you've let all these opportunities get away, this is a big upset opportunity for Tennessee State. 
Earl Holmes having some consultation on the sideline. And on the other end, Darrell Williams talking it over. Tennessee State playing in the Citrus Bowl tonight. Next week, they'll go to another big house, the Georgia Dome. I believe they're going to play South Carolina State next week. Yeah, that's another big rivalry, and we'll have a huge crowd at the Georgia Dome. Okay, this is an interesting situation now. 38 seconds, two timeouts left. You're looking to get into field goal range. Lawrence agree to the top of the screen. Rami Vassar has yet to catch a ball tonight at the bottom. Rushes off. And a little swing pass to Hillary on one bounce, and that'll stop the clock, second and ten. They let Michael Thornton, the defensive end, get in a little bit too quickly, and they could not set the screen up. You know, when you run screen, you get at least got to slow the guys down a little bit to allow the lineman to set up and get outside in front of the back. That was just too much penetration. Look at Jarek Hillary, the freshman from Brunswick, Georgia. The Ohio Valley Conference Newcomer of the Week in early September in a big game against Jackson State. Again, the delay to Hillary. And Tennessee State, even though it's a short game, will use their second timeout to stop it with 28 seconds left in the half. We understand that Damian Slaughter has taken an early exit to the locker room. There he goes. But again, it's amazing to me he's able to walk off under his own power. I didn't think he had a shot, Tom. It looked awful ugly, but you never know for sure until the doctors and the trainers get down there and check things out, and I'm sure they'll work on him and... If he can play without further further fear of injury, I'm sure he'll be in there in the second half. Mike Tirico and the guy standing by with the GMAC halftime report. I'm sure they'll have highlights of that big Texas A&M Colorado game today. A lot of good football games today. Northwestern looked good coming yep. back, spanking Air Force. Surprised Ken me a little bit. Kentucky wins its second in a row. How about that? Bill Curry yep. with a reprieve. Good football coach. Yes, he is. Good man, too. Even more important. Now the total yards, now pretend you just turned on your set and you're looking at that and you're probably sitting there saying, oh, this is a blowout, I'm going to click somewhere else. Don't touch that dial. No surfing. <laughs> We're tied at seven. No surfing. Seven, seven. We had the lightning delay. This is just one of those bizarre nights, ladies and gentlemen. I, I told you, didn't I? Well, wherever you go, please, i got to get away from you. Weird things. I had Northwestern blowing a 28-7 lead at home last week. Nothing is ever normal. Anymore. Let's see if they can get the ball vertically down the field now. That is not their strength off this. They'll just give it to Hillary, see if he can find a hole. He does it. Stopped at the 39. See, now, look what's happening. A&M is using their timeouts, looking for an opportunity to block a punt or run one back. That's good, deep. That's good play by A&M. Stops the clock with 21 seconds to go in the half. Florida A&M is down to one timeout, so each team with one timeout remaining. Clifton Moore. Florida A&M next week. They'll go up to the nation's capital, back into the Mideast Athletic Conference race and deal with Howard University. That will not be any walk in the park. Now here's a situation where you've got to make a decision. Do you rush the kicker or do you set up a return? Because if you rush the kicker, you almost put that, if you, if you're, if you penalize on the kicker, if you rough him, you can give them field goal position. Well, the Rattlers are coming with the block because Jamie Bell is the only man back to receive this punt. Clifford Green is back there and he knows the rush is coming. Penetration, but not quite the block. As it is, Green, a short one, it's off the hands of Bell. Again, he may have been interfered with trying to catch the punt. Sure was, Tom. That's a good call. You've got to give the punt return a fair opportunity to catch the football. Clearly a violation there. So that stops the clock with 12 seconds left. Only a 25-yard punt. Have a five-yard kick catch interference foul inside the two-yard bound on the kicking team. Five yards from the spot. In college football, you've got to give a two-yard cushion. And you can see right there, number 88, nowhere near two yards away. That's Juan Hall. Good call. So the ball is marked for play at the 39-yard line. 12 seconds left to go here in the first half. You've there. got one timeout left here, Tom, so you've got to get the ball vertically down the field. You've got two plays and a timeout. 
Mario Allen, the backup quarterback, in for the injured Damian Slaughter. Looking left all the way, and off the hands of Robert Wilson with seven seconds left. <laughs> That's a little dangerous, too. Betty Gaston, the outside backer, was kind of trying to run underneath that out. Another injury. Well, was he just caught up? He may be tangled up with some uh, wires there. So here comes Wilson. He's all right. Yeah. Wilson's having a good first half. Last year, he caught 58 balls. Excellent wide receiver. And Famu is just going to fall on the snap. And that'll do it unless Tennessee State wants to stop the clock. They do not. The GMAC halftime report is coming up in just a moment. Through one half of play in a bizarre night in Orlando, Bill Davis, Tennessee State Tigers are tied with the Florida A&M University Rattlers at 7-7, seven and seven, despite the fact that Tennessee State has about 40 yards in total offense here in the first half, and Florida A&M has just dominated this game. Well, the numbers don't match. You see 7-7, seven to seven, no way does it add up to what the total yardage looks like. Let's check in now with Sam Crenshaw. Sam? I'm here with Coach Bill Davis, and Coach, you have survived thunder, lightning, wind, rain, and only 38 yards total offense, and your team's still in it. Well, you know, uh, we survived that fumble. That fumble line there really helped us, got us in the game, and we got to go in and get our offensive line. We got, they're beating us on both sides of the football at the line of scrimmage. We got to come out and develop some consistency on offense and do what we can do best. Defensively, we got to start wrapping up, tackling, because we're giving them too much on first down. All right, Coach Bill Davis, Tennessee State. Good luck second half. Thank you. All right. All right, Sam. Bill Davis got some work to do, and uh, he's right. His team is being dominated on both sides of the line of scrimmage, but not on the scoreboard. At the end of the first half here in Orlando, Tennessee State and Florida A&M tied up at 7. The GMAC halftime report follows these messages. After the Colorado loss, a game and a half up on Houston in the card race. Halftime, Tennessee State and FAMU, the Tigers and Rattlers locked up at 7. We've got more smash after this break. By a couple of touchdowns as they play in the fourth quarter. Our score at halftime, Tennessee State, Florida A&M, 7-7. We're having some weather problems down in Florida. We're going to try to get you back out to the game as soon as possible. Their disturbing story of domestic violence involving an athlete. Our score right now, down in Orlando, Tennessee State and Florida A&M, they're tied up at 7. Going to the second half, we're trying to clear up some technical difficulties. We'll get you back out to the game just as soon as we can. Up. We have our signal back, but as you check out what it looks like in Orlando, you'll see that they're not playing. It's raining like crazy down there. In fact, I'm from the south. We call that a gully washer or a frog strangler. So they're still delayed right now thanks to the weather at the Florida A&M Tennessee State game. In the meantime, we're going to get you out to some other programming. NFL yearbook, football of a different level. It's going to be the Carolina Panthers. But just as soon as they start playing again, Tom Meese and Sam Crenshaw and Mike Mayock, they'll all be back with you to bring you the second half of this ball game. Coming up after the break is the NFL yearbook, Carolina Panthers. As soon as that's done, as soon as the weather's better, we get you back to the game. Stick and stay with us. Welcome, my friends, to the halftime that never ends here at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. Tennessee State, Florida A&M are still tied at seven, and they are still in the locker room. Why? As soon as the first half ended, the skies opened up like I've never seen them before here in Central Florida with a lightning and rainstorm that made the one we had, which delayed the game in the first quarter, look like chump change. I mean, this thing is really major league. It's just now beginning to tail off, Mike, and the teams are still being told to stay in the locker room. Hey, if I'm the teams, I'm staying in the locker room right now. It's 7-7, tough first half. Well, and not, a, not a only a tough first half, a tough night in Central Florida. Accidents all over the highway. The roads are treacherous. Many of them flooded out. This is the scene during the halftime. These people are trying to stay dry. Now, that's the Florida A&M University marching band. They were out for the whole halftime. Nobody in the stands but lightning flashing around this whole stadium. These kids are doing their best to put on a show, but hey, they, they have metal instruments to their lips. They're trying to, and our camera, our camera guy, is hey, out this there. guy, I don't, I don't, I don't know who that is, but he deserves some kind of extra duty pay. Ken, Ken Hart, Hart, Ken Hart, you deserve double pay. And meanwhile, there is the rain—a sample of the rain coming down the the, uh, the stairs here at the Orlando Citrus Bowl. The field is a quagmire. I couldn't believe two things about that halftime. Oh, you're gonna see, I know what you're going to say. Well, Go ahead. A, that the band was allowed to be on the field for their own safety with the lightning, and B, 
if you don't even care about that, they tore up the field even yeah, more. I, I've never seen a halftime this bad with rain where they, number one, allow a ban onto the field because now it's a quagmire. Yeah. It's going to be a horrible half if we get to play it. But even more than that, how about the safety of the band? In the first That's quarter, right. we called action because of the safety of the players. Well, how about the same consideration to the band? A little scary. A huge thunderstorm that you maybe can hear still rumbling in the background, still lots of lightning in the area. I don't think right now that this game is going to start anytime soon, but the latest word we have is that they're going to wait as long as possible and try to get the second half in. In case you're tuning in late, there has been some scoring, Mike, on, on the game's first series. Florida A&M hit the board again in a driving rainstorm. Florida A&M did a nice job. They ran the ball five or six times consecutively, and then what they did, nice call by Billy Joe, they would go play action, deep pass, they suck the free safety in, Victor Bond bites on the play action, Slaughter does a nice job, 40-yard touchdown pass, Robert Wilson, touchdown. Nice call by Billy Joe. And the extra point made it 7 to nothing. And Florida A&M spent the rest of the first half mowing down Tennessee State, moving up and down the field. It looked like they were ready to go in for their second touchdown of the half, and then what happened? Well, we've got a 10 to 14 point turnaround here. Florida A&M going in to score with a ball in about the five yard line. Now watch what happens here. Richard Freeman, the linebacker, makes a great hit on Jackson, the fullback, strips the ball, and then Clifford Green, starting quarterback, gets that Sunday bounce. 94-yard fumble return. That's a Tennessee State record. And so what you have after a one half of football that took about an hour and 45 minutes because <laughs> of the first lightning delay is Florida a and with almost 260 yards in total offense. And of course, that run back doesn't count on the total offense for Tennessee State. Their offense has produced under 50 yards in total offense, and yet we are tied. The dichotomy is incredible. Tennessee State can't get anything done. A&M's up and down the field, especially one guy. Tailback Kwame Vidal has had a Superior first half. Really impressed. 325-pound offensive line. They pushed the pile, and Vidal's done a great job getting in, making great cuts in the hole behind that line. And one of the stories that'll develop in the second half, well, let's go. Let's take a look at Kwame Vidal. I'm sure he'll continue to develop in the second half. Yeah, they've run two basic plays. They've run a draw and right there in isolation. And watch Vidal in the hole. I like his lateral quickness. Right there, cuts back to his left, and you don't even know it, but he picks up seven and eight yards at a chunk. Handoff. He's going to get to the corner now. He's got 4-5 speed. He picks up about 12 there. Here it is. Isolation. Great block by the fullback Jackson. And there he is again. He's picking up 8 to 12 yards just about every carry, Tom. Meanwhile, the rain is beginning to lessen, but uh, Kwame Vidal reigning all over Tennessee State, 137 yards in the first half. Let's not forget, though, we ever do get the second half going again, that Damian Slaughter, FAMU's starting quarterback, looked uh, sustained what looked like a horrible leg injury late in the first half actually got up and walked off under his own power we don't know if he'll get to play in this game you know we ran the replay twice and i made the comment to you it looked to me like the lawrence taylor hit on joe theisman it was almost sickening yet the young man was able to walk to the sidelines walk into the locker room and regardless of whether he ever gets in the ball game again tonight that's a big victory for him. Now, our Sam Crenshaw is somewhere in the stadium. I trust he's a little bit more moist than you and I are because we've been uh, under wraps while this tremendous uh, uh, thunderstorm has been going on. Sam, where are you? The Florida and of locker. Well, <laughs> Sam, your, your wires oh. are cutting in and out. Sam, can you hear us? I'm right here. All right. <laughs> where, where are you, Sam? Okay, I'm right here. All right, where are we? Can we get a camera? There you are. There he is. All right, we got you on camera now, Sam. Sam, you look good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about the rain. <laughs> Well, I got an official right here. Come back. Well, what, oh, oh, <laughs> what's the story on this thing now? What, what, how long are we going to be waiting? Well, right now we're waiting until the lightning goes past. And once once that goes past and it's safe and plenty to go out, then we're going to go back, back out. Right now the referee will come back out. Once he comes out, like right now, we're about ready to get started. We're on the way out. How long are you going to give them the stretch before about you start? five, About five to seven minutes probably what we're going to give them. Hey, Sam, okay. why would they, why would they want us... Why would they All want right, to stretch? Five, five to seven minutes is what the man says. They're going to get him on the field, get him stretching. Hopefully, we're going to get some more football. Sam, if they go on this field and start to stretch, we may never hear from them again. They may sink into oblivion. <laughs> it is really, especially the size of that FMAU offensive line. You want to talk about sinking. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. We do have uh, uh, just an unbelievable situation here. The thunder is still rumbling in the background, Mike. I saw more like... Is that the band or the thunder? That's the thunder. Oh, I think. okay. I think. Okay. I don't know. But it, it is... You played, you know, major college football. Boston College. You made some trips here into Florida. You ever run into anything like this? You know, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I've never seen a football game like this that incorporated both the rain and the lightning. The rain, sure. You know, you play yeah. through that kind of situation. Any football player does, but not the lightning. 
One of the interested spectators here tonight is uh, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. His name is Ernest Givens. He went, uh, of course, with the Houston Oilers for several years, and now he's a member of the Jacksonville Jaguars. And uh, Sam caught up with him a little bit earlier when it was a little bit drier. Okay, we're talking with Ernest Gibbons, the Jacksonville Jaguars, from the Houston Oilers. You guys got an off date this weekend, and you're here watching football, but you got a special interest in this game. Yes, I have a special interest in this game. My cousin Robert Wilson played for the family, Rattlers and everything. We worked out this past off season, so I hope he does a good job. And he's, right now, he's doing a good job. You got to be really pleased with that first touchdown. Talk about that. I'm very, very pleased. Uh, that, that goes with the blood, you know what I'm saying? Cousin working out one another, and it's good to see family do real good. I'm very, very proud of Robert. He has a long ways to go. And going to be successful. Oh, cool. Okay, quick before I let you go. First year expansion team, how's it going for Jacksonville? Uh, right now we spun a little bit. We're not winning too many ball games, but in time we're going to start putting the thing together and we're going to come out some victorious with a lot of victories. All right, good luck to you and the Jaguars the rest of the season. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. Okay, Ernest Gibbons of the Jacksonville Jaguars at halftime here in, in Orlando. And you saw the lightning flash on that tape. Now let's go live to Sam Crenshaw. Sam. All right, uh, we're here in the Florida and Rattlers getting ready to come back out into the field. Did a little bit of check up on Damon Slaughter, the quarterback who was hurt in the first half of the game. They iced the knee down. They think it's going to be fine. He could go, but look for Mario Allen to start when they get their first offensive series when they come back onto the field. Sam, I think that's an excellent idea. The Rattlers and the Tigers are retaking the field. We're going to have more football here from the Citrus Bowl. Believe it or not, we're tied at seven. We'll be back with the second half in a moment. Life is a sport. Drink it up. I feel like it's Halloween. <laughs> Welcome back to one of those bizarre nights that in my career as a sportscaster I've ever been involved in. We're and Tommy, to... that spans a long time, pal. You had to have that, didn't you? It, this, the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, <laughs> Tom Meese and Mike Mayock with you. Tennessee State, Florida A&M. This game kicked off at 7.06 p.m. We are uh, just ending, we hope, our second lightning delay. Florida A&M is out there. Tennessee State's out there. We are going to we are going to kick this thing off. The, the rain has lessened considerably, Mike, but there's still lots of lightning around the stadium and almost nobody in the stands. The thing I don't understand is there's been no consistency. There's as much lightning around right now, if not more, than there was in the first quarter when they pulled everybody off the field. Also, our equipment has taken a beating in this tremendous maelstrom here in uh, Central Florida. We are operating now with one live camera, one live uh, field camera. We're uh, efforting to get the rest of the cameras up just as soon as possible. We had to dismantle efforting? our high... Efforting? efforting? We're trying. But we had to dismantle... <laughs> Look at Stevens' kickoff for Florida. And then we had to take off our uh, camera in the end zone to your right. Fumble. And a huge hit and a fumble. I didn't see who the up man was for Tennessee State, but he hung on to the ball, number 58. And I don't have him here on my roster, but that's his number. Actually, that was 56, 56 Gaston. Right. Big hit there. There's a lot of confusion on all sides right now. We're trying to get our wires uncrossed as best we can. It's very tough to bring you a football game in conditions like this. And with us from the start, I hope you're enjoying it tonight. Tennessee State, first and 10 at the 32-yard line. This game very much in doubt, remember, tied at 7. And this is Jared Hillary. For little or no gain, maybe a loss of a yard. Earl Holmes is in on the tackle. The rain has lessened. The lightning is still in the area. And this is a dangerous night, Mike, in central Florida. Accidents all over the place because of this weather. Yeah, while we were off air there for a while, we got a report that accidents, police couldn't get to them because there was so much flooding. Just kind of a scary situation right now. But the football goes on. Second down and ten for Tennessee State. Hillary slips the initial tackle of Bennett Hayes, but runs into a host of Rattlers and should actually wind up with no gain or maybe a slight loss. That field has just got to be a quite mark. Earl Holmes, of course, needed 16 tackles for Florida A&M to break the FAMU record for tackles in a career. We understand he has six so far tonight, so he needs 10 more. Yeah, Frankie Poole. 20 years ago, that record of 389 career tackles has stood the test of time for 20 years. Third and 10, Tennessee State unable to move the ball in their first possession. Williams just looking for a place to hide, now by some more time. Gets it away and just throws it out of bounds. 
in and out of the hands of his fullback, Lamar Wallace. And Tennessee State, as they did so often, Mike, in the first half, three and out. They just have not had any kind of ability to get the ball down the field vertically in the past game. And you know what, Tommy? They've had at least 45 games in a row where they've thrown for over 100 yards, and they're in big danger of losing that tonight. No pass offense at all. Clifford Green in there at a punt. Jamie Bell back in single safety at the 30. Tom, in this kind of game, special teams becomes critical. It's a field position game. You see? Oh. Shank. Shank right off the right side of his foot. It all depends where the official marks it out. This will be in Tennessee State territory at the Tiger 46. That's about a six-yard punt from scrimmage. Another bizarre happening in Orlando. We're still tied at two. Any four, just $109 at Pep Boys now. ESPN 2's College Football is brought to you by First Union National Bank. When it comes to service, everything matters. And by the Olive Garden Restaurant. Come in and enjoy the good, fresh food you love. Only at the Olive Garden Italian Restaurant. Obviously, that shot of Orlando was taken much earlier. This is the Florida a &M University Marching Band. They sought refuge after they got soaked at halftime in their bus. Now, since they've gotten the seats all wet in the bus, they're climbing out of the bus. They come back. <laughs> By God, they drove down here from Tallahassee. They're going to see a game. I give May for effort. I'll tell you that much. All right. Rattlers have it. And I remember, we, we tend to forget this game is tied, and Damian Slaughter is back in at quarterback. Great score. Remarkable. Flying on the play as he hands off to Kwame Vidal. Damian Slaughter, who had what looked on to the naked eye like a grotesque injury to one of his knees late in the first half, is back out there calling signal. Looks like a hold on the first play from scrimmage. You know, Tom, this is the type of football game that should favor A&M. Big offensive line, sloppy field, push the pile. It's had a great first half rushing the football. It becomes, a, as my dad used to say, whenever it got wet, high school football, it's a fullback day. You've got to stop the fullback and tailback. Have a hold on the offense. Repeat first down. After that penalty, let's uh, take a brief respite here and look at the halftime stance, Mike. <laughs> Tilt. <laughs> Tilt is not the word for it, but the bottom line is when you add it all up, 7-7. Seven, seven. Mm -hmm. Also, that one there in the Florida AM column, the turnover, 94 yard touchdown. That's the reason we're at 7 7. And Slaughter, you know, in fairness to him, that football's got to be very tough to handle now. And he threw it well over the head of Robert Wilson. It's going to be tough for anybody to mount a drive in this way. Yeah, I really, I really do believe it becomes more and more a running football game. Robert Wilson was wide open. He ran out, up, and back out again, wide open in the flat. Tennessee State has yet to cover him tonight. Brings up a second down and 22. I'm just so happy Damian Slaughter's back. Yeah. You know, I mean, we thought he's done for the year. We were concerned about his health in general, and here he is leading the attack in the second half. Junior out of Vicksburg, Mississippi, is a transfer out of Hines County Junior College, or Community College. They went 11-1 and one a year ago. I can see why. Guts has anything to do with it. Slaughter again. They just throw that ball out of there and bring up a third down. That time there was good coverage. The secondary realized with 22 yards to go, they've got to sink back under that deep out route. A nice job in the secondary. There was a crowd when we started tonight, around 30,000 or so. Many of them have left. I mean, the first lightning delay, they hung through that. But a lot of them left, and you know what? I hope they had a canoe. <laughs> they either left or they're sitting right up in front of us. I don't, I don't blame them, Mike. I, I really don't the blame. underhang there. <laughs> yeah, what's left is under the underhang. That's right. No dummies. I saw my rental car floating by. Third down and 22. Bobby Vidal. That was the play. Picks up good yardage and slides out of the 48-yard line, but all that does is buy some more yardage to punt for Florida a and I've really enjoyed watching him run the football. That's another situation, him making great cuts, even with a horrible field. Watch how well he cuts on a field like this. This was their best play in the first half draw. Okay, now a good back understands where. Look at the cuts he's making. Mm. In and out, he's the only guy that's sure-footed. Now he's going to break it outside. I really like the young man. Good tailback. The punt for the Rattlers and back to receive, hopefully for Tennessee State, is Wayne Moore. It's going to be very tough to handle if it gets back to Moore. Nice punt. He signals fair catch. It is a good one. And it was tough to handle. Falls on a loose ball back at the 12, and they signal Tennessee State ball. 
Florida and the Rattlers are very upset. Chief among them, Edward Davis, but the officials say it's the Tigers' ball. Wow. Billy Joe is shell shocked. Look at him up there. Let's take a look at the hit now. This could be a bad call. Clear fumble. Now here's where the ref anticipates the recovery before the ball is done. You see what I mean, Tom? He anticipated the ball was recovered by the return man when in fact it was Davis all the way. Watch one of Moore's hands though. I think he I think Moore of Tennessee State retains one of his hands on the football. I no, think that, that doesn't count. No right. possession there. Eric Hillary, he's not going anywhere. One thing Florida AM does get out of this though, they pin the Tennessee State back and the Tigers have shown no offense tonight. Field position, special teams, who can run the football. That's what this half should come down to. And if I'm AM, I don't like that series I just had offensively. They don't need to throw the ball like that. Run the football, play field, make field position battle. Hey. Loss of one, second down at eleven. I still can't believe this game's tied at seven. Pitch back to Jerry Hillary. Almost hold down from behind as well to lose about a yard on the play. And there's number 45 running that ball carrier down. Priority number one when you're blocking the FAMU defense is this guy right here. You can't let him get over top of the pile. You see how they just missed the block there? Watch his pursuit. 4-5-40. Bang. He will clean you up every time. Tackle number seven on the night for Earl Holmes. Senior played at Florida A&M University High School. FAMU has their own high school in Tallahassee. Well, Bobby Bowden wishes he got that one. He does. Could do worse, that's for sure. On the delay to Hillary up to the 15. Big news there is some positive yardage, but Tennessee State will have to punt. Here we go. Field position, special teams, huh? Who wins that battle? Jamie Bell will be back in single safety. Bill Davis is the busiest man for his club tonight on our field again. Clifford Green. There's Jamie Bell. Lightning still ringing the stadium here in Orlando. Yeah, Green did a nice job. He gets a nice punt away. A beauty. Jamie Bell back at his 33. Gets a couple of blocks to midfield, and he's wrestled out of bounds, and I do mean wrestled right there. So Florida a &M has a very short field to work with. 50-yard punt, but it's run back to the 50-yard line. 10.25 to go here in the third on ESPN2. Rattlers and Tigers still tied at seven. Back here in rainy Orlando, it's time to remind you to spend an hour with the babe, the fabulous sports babe, Monday through Friday on ESPN2 at 1 o'clock Eastern time. She takes calls from all over the country. She's got great guests. It's really a great show. If you've heard it on the radio, you know what I mean. Now you can see it on ESPN2, Monday through Friday at 1, the babe. She's everywhere. Hey, she can dish it out, too. Absolutely. I love when the first-time callers go in. Go, Don't hurt me. Hoo-ah. <laughs> Don't hurt me, babe. Don't hurt me. <laughs> Trying to put a hurt on Tennessee State. Kwame Vidal, who's had great success tonight, and picks up about a yard on that play. Brought down by Richard Freeman. Bringing him down is Richard Freeman. They go behind that big left side, Nails and Billy. We've talked all night about Demetrius Billy, 61. Watch him pull out behind Nails. Nails, point of attack. Now Billy's looking for the seal block. Inside linebacker does a nice job, but they're trying to move in behind about 670 pounds, Thomas. Hmm. As the lightning continues to flash, the game goes on with 9.50 to go here in the third. Probably second and nine on the board, but there was no gain on the play. For a changeup, Reggie Glover. Hey, why not? The fullback, and Glover is just short of the first down at about the 41-yard line of Tennessee State. How about that, huh? They pull the other guard this time, Bradley Fita, out in front of Glover. He, with a rare carry. He's got a good average. <laughs> what, one for eight? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Senior out of Douglas, Georgia. See, Glover's the kind of fullback they love here. He's a great blocker. He's 5'11", 210. And Tom, he wears number 29. They might as well put a six on front because, you know, he's a blocker. He's 69, 79. Third down and one. 
Left side again. Bobby Vidal cuts it to the middle. Short game, but that's all he needed. Gets the first down. Ryan Falker was there along with Victor Bunch. You know, we just talked about Reggie Glover, the fullback. That's an isolation play to the tailback. But the key block at the point of attack is the fullback's block, Reggie Glover. He did a great job on the linebacker. Correction, that was Falker along with Victor Bonds on the tackle at the 38-yard line. First down and 10. Reggie Glover, he's fresh anyway, and picks up a first down inside the 25 yard, inside the 30 yard line to the 27. Glover looking impressive. Nice adjustment here by Coach Joe and his staff. They've had Vidal the whole game. Now watch number 68 pull out in front of this fullback carry. There's 68, that's Bradley Fita. He seals the in to Freeman. The corner's caught inside. First down. That's a heck of an offensive play. Victor Bonds to tackle. By the way, that pulling guard, Fita, he's just a growing boy. There he is. 6'2", 350. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Lumper again. He's the workhorse. There it is. Brad Vidal. No, that's Kwame Vidal. 21 instead of 29. He is the workhorse. Down to the 20. Clifford Green brought him down. Here we go, back to the basics. The big fellas, Nails, Billy, point of attack with Glover, and then you let your tailback, Vidal, do the rest. Good crackback block by the split end. Shields the carrier. That allows him to the corner. Vidal has a big night. I'll say a big night. 31 carries on the night so far. That is a new Florida a and record for single game. He's early. He might get 50. 31 carries. Trying to become the 6,000-yard rusher in Rattler history. Vidal again. I guess they figure Glover's given him enough of a rest. He picks up the first down to the 15-yard line. Ryan Falker, the tackle. Sam Crenshaw, where are you? I'm over here on the Tennessee State sideline, and one of the reasons the Rattlers are moving well on the ground, one of them has to be the lack of a, of a lineman for Tennessee State. Jim Lackey, a senior defensive lineman, out for the rest of the game, suffered a broken bone in his left wrist before the half. He may have surgery tomorrow. He may be done for the season. That's a bad one. He, he's an all-Ohio Valley Conference player. That really hurts. First and 10 at the 15 of Tennessee State. Kwame Vidal. And he is met by a whole host of Tigers that time. Chief among them, Falker. Also in on the play was 55, James Johnson. Well, Florida a and was moving the ball crisply like this in the first half. In fact, was on the five-yard line when disaster befell them and they turned the ball over. I wonder if that's going through their mind right now. Take a look at the big fella. Bradley Feet at 6'2", 350 pounds. Can't miss him, can you? Vidal, you can't miss him tonight. You're not missing him that time was Richard Freeman. Stops him after a gain of a couple. That's what happens when the pulling guard misses his block. Demetrius Billy pulled out in front, but missed the block on the linebacker, and Freeman makes it happen. Watch the miss. Here comes the old Matador. <laughs> Cut inside right there by Freeman. That's a good football play by the linebacker. Cut inside the Matador block, makes the tackle. The other scores from around the country. Some of those games still going on. ESPN 2 keeping you updated. Tulsa Golden Hurricane having a big night. And a timeout is called. And we'll take a timeout as well. Timeout, Florida and m 5.52 to go here in the third quarter from Orlando. Yes, we're still going, and we're still tied at 7. But it's worth it. ESPN2, people who do. This is what it was like at halftime here at the Citrus Bowl. That's Ken Harton holding on for dear life as the second lightning storm roared in. The wind's almost toppling his camera. He eventually had to dismantle the camera and get the heck out of there for his own safety. This is how it is now. Ken is back there with the help of Billy West. The camera's back up. Ken is hanging in there. Ken, great job. Uh, be safe. And if you see any lightning, leave. Leave, man. And you thought television that was glamorous. <laughs> in Atlanta. Now, did they hang on to win that today? I Maryland? believe they did. They were leading. I believe they did. Back to the attack, Florida and m And a flag on the play as Kwame Vidal takes the handoff. Vidal was 163 yards before that handoff. 
was on a third down and eight. Going to probably get a hold. And once again, A&M self-destructing mm -hmm. in the red zone. And a field goal will be an adventure on this field now. First half in the red zone. There's Billy Joe. He can't believe it. But the first half in the red zone, the first time they give up a touchdown on the 94-yard fumble recovery. Bill Number Davis wants 89, to Brian Burry, the tight end. There he is on the right side of your screen. Looks yep. like the World Wrestling Federation right there. Two-point takedown. Bill Davis was motioning in a moment ago to uh, decline the penalty as thunder rumbles in the background and yet more lightning is coming into the area and Florida A&M is going to try a field goal. This is going to be interesting. Jeff Stevens is well within his range, but you don't know what the field is like down there. And let's not forget in the first half when the field was in better shape, they got a good push up the middle and Gaston blocked the field goal from about this distance. So the penalty is refused, bringing up the fourth down. Now, the, one of the key men on this attempt by FAMU is also the holder, and that is Mario Allen, the back of quarterback. Holder really has to do his job, and the kicker, Stevens, is trying to pick out an inch of turf that isn't underwater. And the snapper is Antonio Barrial. He's a full-time linebacker, and Tom, you know what happens when you get tired in a game. It can be a little tough in the second half trying to snap yeah. when you're a full-time player. That's where it went. 29-yard field goal attempt by Stevens. Angle to the left. The hole was down. The kick is long enough, and it's good. Hey, a great job by the holder, Allen, and the kicker, Stevens. Like everything else tonight, it's been an adventure, but it got through, and that's all that matters. 29-yard field goal is good, and let's watch the hands of number seven, Mario Allen of Florida. You know. You're going to see a low snap and a nice job handling the football. You want the ball right around your seven. Instead, you get it at the knee. You turn it, the slip, but it's good. And it looked like a knuckleball. It didn't look pretty. It's just like in baseball, Tommy. Oh, they're, all, they're all line drives in the book. Oh, that was all that matters so is the result. That was very close. Hey, this kid Allen's had a nice game. Yes, Stepped in when Slaughter got hurt for two out of three. Did a nice job moving the club, and that's a nice job right there holding the field. Goal. And he's a senior quarterback who's not starting, not playing a lot, which tells you that he has a good attitude. He's a part of this team any way he, he can be, and uh, he's helped them out tonight. So what you're saying is you're familiar with being a third-team player. You know how he feels. Uh, yes, okay. but not in football. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crazy. I'm too little to play this game. <laughs> Give me a round ball. I'm more at home. All right, that lonely young man for Tennessee State is Stanley Cook. He's standing back about his own 15-yard line. Stevens in to kick off after FAMU has taken a 10-7 to lead. Chips at it. And Cook will not handle it. Wayne Moore. Wayne Moore over the 30 to the 31 yard line. And he's bumped there rather hard. And that's where Tennessee State will take over. Leonard Inge made the tackle for FAMU. You know, Tom, this game's been unfolding in the second half exactly as we talked about at the top of the half. And that is special teams, defense, and ru running the football. Late flag just went down. And that last scoring drive by Florida A&M culminated by the 29-yard field goal by Stevens. Ten plays, 39 yards. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Oh, this is going to be key. That was real late. Somebody was obviously drawing at the, the official. 15-yard penalty. And when you talk about field position, Tom, all of a sudden, yep. you're getting the football. It looks Red like on a 45-yard line. Conduct on green, first down. Well, Billy Joe doesn't seem too upset about it. I don't know. He might be upset. I mean, everybody shows it differently. He's probably saying, what, you know, what else can we do to lose this football game? Five and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter for the Citrus Bowl. Williams appeared to get the snap a bit late. And Jarek Hillary, who hasn't had much success tonight, Earl Holmes met him up and brought him down. That's one reason why you will not have success against the Rattlers. Holmes is a player, I'll tell you right now, he's a football player. And there is a fierce battle going on up front and with the fullbacks and linebackers. This is just pure smash mouth football. No gain, second down and 10. Tennessee State's long points coming on a 94-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Williams on the play fake, throws in the coverage. 
Lawrence Segree, the intended receiver, and good coverage on the play. Was that Odom? Burley. Primus Burley. Primus Burley on his back. Got away with something there. Now, here's a guy they've got to get the football to right here, Segree. The ball's thrown late. Let's see if the hit comes early. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And now I'm an old defensive back, and, and I don't like to keep call too many of those, but that was obvious. Burley made the hit before the ball got there. However, it goes as an incomplete pass. Third down and ten. Williams trying to set up a screen, and the screen's got a hole in it. And that hole is Barry Brown. Came in to break it up, and Tennessee State again three and out. Remember, they call him an outside linebacker. He's a former safety. He can run sideline to sideline. He did a great job snipping out screen, eating the block, and making the tackle. Once again, Clifford Green is in the punt, and once again, Jamie Bell is back to receive for Florida A&M. Last punt by Green went 50 yards, remember? And Bell is back there in, in the portion of the field that hasn't been uh, receiving too much action tonight. She get good footing here. As good as you can get. But he does the wise thing and lets that thing roll by him. And it'll be down at the five. You don't want to touch it in that situation. No, it's a good play, but it's field position. This is ideal for Tennessee State. Make them go 95 yards, and they have a whole bend but don't break philosophy. They feel that sooner or later there's going to be an interception or a penalty. 52-yard punt, we understand, no return back at the five-yard line. You see the final of Colorado over Texas A&M earlier today in the game of the score. day. 29-21. Colorado over A&M? That's right. Ooh. And Rutgers at least giving Penn State a game. Well, originally at this time, the NASCAR Super Truck Goodies 150 was supposed to come your way from the Martinsville Speedway, Martinsville, Virginia as Florida A&M's Kwame Vidal picks up three or four yards. That was supposed to be on now. It's going to have to wait <laughs> because we have about four minutes to go here in the third quarter of our twice lightning delayed game here in Orlando. This we understand it's going to have to wait a long time. It was rained out and they're going to they're going to air it on Monday September 25th. So Colorado beats A&M. Lee Corso guessed that correctly. James, the old SMU guy, said, uh-uh, he had A&M. Bad day for James. SMU got shut down. They sure did. Sorry, Craig. Kwame Vidal over the pile of the 16, 17-yard line. Just to, just to uh, qualify, the NASCAR Super Truck Goodies 150 rained out today. will be run Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. You'll see it live on ESPN2. Now, Tom, we've got a third down situation that is really an important situation for Tennessee State. You've got them back in their own 12-yard line, third and about three. This is where your defense has to step up and make a play, get the ball back around the 40 or 50, because let's face it, Tennessee State has done nothing offensively all night. They need the field position. Bam, you eight out of 14 on third down conversions tonight. By the way, that Thursday game, Maryland, Georgia Tech, Maryland only gave 41 to 40. The 4-0 on ESPN Thursday night. Here's Kwame Vidal. Look at him go over the 15 of the 20. Whoa. First down. And a little bit of hitting going on in front of the FAMU bench, and the flag follows. Clifford Green was involved. I don't, I'm not sure, unless somebody else came in after that, Kwame's the guy that instigated the contact on Green. That was clean, hard football. I want to see what happened after that. Let's sit back and listen now. <laughs> That's not, not a penalty. No, that's not a dirty hit on Green. That's not a penalty. Kwame Vidal instigated the contact. They were just following through. That's a poor call. And that changes the whole complexion of the field position battle. But let's not lose sight of the fact that Kwame Vidal has just set a FAMU record. 181 yards in a, in a single game. Oh, he's had a great night. And I told you earlier he's going to carry it 50 times. And that might be conservative, Tom. Well, you study the stats of Florida A&M coming into this game, and you see two things. Uh, one is that uh, they have a huge offensive line. The other one is that this man is going to run behind it and kill you. Kwame Vidal up to midfield. It looks to me he's running like on AstroTurf. No problem. Let's take a look at that last play where they call the unsportsmanlike conduct at the end. Watch who institutes the contact inside the field of play. Vidal goes right after it. Great hit. That's a penalty? Come on. Well, it's been a long night for the refs, too. That guy 
<laughs> Maybe they lost their temper. Hey, it's 22 to 3 there, but it's 10 7 on the scoreboard. So. Give the Rattlers credit, though. They're dug out of a hole thanks to that man, Kwame Vidal. They started this in their own five yard line, and they picked up 50 yards in a couple of minutes' play. Bend but don't break. You're looking for a turnover, you're looking for a big penalty. But Kwame Vidal is doing a great job behind that huge offensive line. The rain has stopped. There's still lots of life and lightning in the area, but it's all cloud to cloud. No, no cloud to surface lightning. Wouldn't want to take a one iron out. <laughs> but uh, I guess it's Tommy, you can't hit a one iron anyway. That's true. You know me too well. And they say not even God can hit the one iron. Wouldn't want to take a chance. Second down and four. You could just run this tape all night. Hand off to Kwame Vidal. Awfully hard, though, to go 95 yards in the state free. Tennessee State's playing the percentages. We'll see what kind of mark we get here for a first down or not. Well, I'll tell you this, Mr. Mayock. If Florida a and is able to go 95 yards from state free, the way Tennessee State has been stopped offensively tonight, Florida a and in the catbird seat. Tennessee State cannot even get a first down generated. And let's face it, AM has self-destructed in the red zone. Third down and one, and Vidal will pick it up and hang on to the ball. That's another thing. In these conditions, he's been hit a lot tonight. That time, Victor Bonds got him. He hasn't laid the ball on the ground tonight. Now, he's a good, tough back. Great cuts in the hole. And let's not... This offensive line, great job off the ball. Watch 29, top of your screen. You see the block right there at the point of attack? That's why Vidal has had such a good football game. The garden tackle pushed the pile, and the fullback gets the block at the point of attack. Nice, Land. nice block by Club. Land goes out wide. Jamie Bell is out wide as well. Vidal over the 200-yard mark, and here he goes again. He's tired. Yeah, he must be getting tired. He's tired. Don't tell that, though, to, to Benny Gaston. He says, I made a great play. He's not tired. Hey, Benny Gaston's had a nice game, and let's not forget who he's filling in for. Gaston's filling in for Michael Holsey, who was the preseason Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year. Out with an injury and a suspension. I told you he's hurting. Well, he just needs a rest. He's limping over. Tied a Mideast Athletic Conference record for 44 attempts, so this is not a conference game. Tom, if he doesn't get hurt, he might carry the ball 60 times tonight. 44 rushes, 208 yards. Look out, Howard University. Kwame Vidal is coming to the nation's capital next week. Give it to Glover. Glover, the up man. Keeps those legs turning to the 28. He's just short of a first down. And that will do it for the third quarter. A field goal by Stevens of Florida A&M and the running of Kwame Vidal have the Rattlers from Tallahassee on top. After three from the Citrus Bowl, 10-7, Florida A&M. Back to a stormy night in Florida in a moment. Don't be thirsty. Life is a sport. Drink it up. Welcome back to the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. There's our score, 10-7. Next Saturday, more college football at ESPN2. We'll be in beautiful Fort Collins, Colorado. Colorado State Rams, recent conquerors of the Air Force, taking on Brigham Young University. That's 2 Eastern, noon, Mountain Time, 11 o'clock on the left coast. You'll see it on ESPN2. That's Next a big year. game in the whack. Sure is. Boy, that conference is uh, never a clear-cut favorite from, from start to finish. It's always jumbled up. Now, during the break, you know, you think the storm is over, the rain has stopped. Not. Look at the middle of your screen. Oh. Oh. Now, when that happened in the first quarter, they sent everybody off. But I guess they figured, what the heck? <laughs> we're here. America is watching. And we're not going to go anywhere. Okay, we're down almost into the red zone now. This is where they've self-destructed all night. The difference in the football game is their inability to put points on the ball board inside the 25-yard line. A uh, picture of the Tennessee State band. They're looking back up at the sky. There, don't adjust your set. That is right, the total yardage figure. And it's a three-point football game at this point. Lover slips the tackle behind the line. Lover out of bounds at the 20-yard line. That was an excellent run. Michael Thompson should have made the tackle in the backfield that time. Left side of your screen. There's the guard pulling out again. Seal block. There's the tackle. They should have made the tackle right there. Glover does a nice job. Positive yardage. Boris Jackson on the tackle. 
Reggie Glover, he's the unsung ball carrier tonight. You know, we talk about Vidal all night, but look at this guy. Four carries for 34 yards, and he's knocked linebackers down for Vidal all night long. Second down, about five for FAMU. Trying to extend a three-point lead. Glover again, hauled down from behind. Making a tackle for Tennessee State that time, Larry Floyd. You know, they've run this play all night long. The guard pulls out around the tackle. Bradley Feed at number 68, all 350 pounds, pulls out. There he is looking for a block, gets Freeman, and now it's just a matter of pushing the pile for yardage. That, Rick, Thomas, that's what they've done all night. Not Floyd, Daryl Hinton on the tackle. <laughs> Hinton, and there is there's a good old Slim, Bradley Feed. Raises his body out there again, and Glover is hauled down back at the 14-yard line. Now here's a guy, Tom, that has never missed a whopper attack. Or yeah, or a meal, I was going to say. Check that out. Well, he's from he's from here Vista, he California, and here he comes. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of inertia coming around the corner right there, and that's a great block on Freeman. 6'2", 350, on the move. Wonder if Jenny Craig is watching our telecast tonight. You know, I. Had, I asked Anthony Curry, defensive coordinator, who he liked up front. Look at that line. I mean, the, the little guy, the little baby's 260 in center. How would you like to be 260 and be called a run? Kwame <laughs> <laughs> Vidal down at the eight-yard line. So much bizarre has happened tonight, you got to laugh at some of this stuff. Look at this. You know, he's the runt of that particular litter. And the other thing is, we don't even have the tight end lifted, but Brian Burry, 6'4", 270. So you go across that front, they average over 320 pounds. And they're putting that weight advantage to good use tonight. Running up and down the field. So look at Austin's your center. There's Fita, 68 right now, and, and he dwarfs hit the center. Here's Oh, look at Vidal. Well, that's the end of the field that hasn't seen much action tonight. And Kwame Vidal is just short of the first down. This will be fourth at about a yard. Let's look at Bradley Fita again. Bradley's getting more TV time than he's ever had in his life. Right guard. Watch him. Point of attack. And he's just going to push the pile. And how'd you like to be under that? Oh, that's what I call a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> a wet one. <laughs> you know, to finish the thought, though, Coach Curry told me that for a guy that big, he was amazed at his quickness coming around the corner and the ability to block. Bradley Fina from Vista, California. Samoan. And there's Samoa of him down there. Fourth down and two, they say, and Fabio's going to go for it with a three-point lead. Great hit. Vidal hit behind the line. Did he get a good spot? It's going to depend on that. Richard Freeman made a heck of a play. You know something? You're up by three. That's a scary call. Man. Yeah. I, mean, I got to think about the field goal of field conditions like this. But Billy Joe has one more football game than I have. Well, I think what he's saying is, listen, our offensive line has taken us this far. We're averaging four or five yards a pop. If we don't get a yard, we don't deserve to win this football game. Well, Billy's going to look on now from an angle, a very critical measurement. That was a long yard they had to go. It really was. Richard Freeman did a nice job from his linebacker position making the initial hit. Well, the length of the football, Billy Jones, and we had him all the way. And it's first and goal at the four-yard line. And Bill Davis wants a timeout to talk about it because his team is down by three, and they get down by ten with no offense to speak of tonight. They could be in a bad way. Twelve minutes even left to go in the fourth in Orlando. Bam, your Rattlers lead it by three. Life. ESPN 2's College Football is brought to you by Coors Light. Ship coal to preserve the clean taste of the Rockies. Coors Light, tap the Rockies. And by the Florida Department of Citrus. Florida orange juice. Are you drinking enough? That's the shot the Chamber of Commerce wanted to see tonight, but this is the shot we're going to... Now, this is good old Bradley Feeder. What is he doing, Mike Mayock? He's doing push-ups in, in anticipation of a score. But his left knee is on the ground. Now, that's how, you know, how women used to do it in yeah, the old days. Yeah. And, you know, get on the knee and you right. do the push-up. That's yeah. what he's doing. He's working right. those arms out. <laughs> that is serious business here. 10-7 Florida a and University. After that measurement before the commercial, they have a first and goal at the floor. And Bill Davis, I think, took a good time out there to rally the defensive troops. They've gone 90 yards thus far without any mistakes. 
big, big series right here. They can't afford to get 10 down. They don't have the offense to come back. Coach Davis knows it, too. Vidal over the pile for about a yard, and he absorbs a huge hit there. Ryan Falker hit him at the top of the jump. You know, I've been incredibly impressed by the intensity and the hitting ability of both these clubs persevering through all this weather. Talk about a great effort. Watch the top of the pile. Kwame's going to try and go over the top. There's the block at the point of attack. Now watch the hit right there. And wow. you, know, you know something, Mike? Turn Falker, sideways. Falker was hit by the center, had to fight off the center's block. Oh, it was a good one. On the Repeat and all that's been off because his team is offside. It's a killer because it's half the distance. Repeat the down. So it's first down and goal now from the two. The way Florida a has been going tonight, I think you'd have to like their chances here, and especially around that left side. The jumbo package is in the game. That's redundant on this day. <laughs> they give the Glover the up man who stopped for about a yard. And the Tennessee State Band is playing on at the other end of the field. I guess the action's far away from them. they got to amuse themselves. There they are. Billy Joe told us yesterday, they have to talk about perseverance. These guys are still here, still playing, put on a great halftime show. But Billy Joe told us when he gets in that jumbo package, you know what they're going to do. He said, Mike, we're not going to throw the football. This is the 18th play of this drive. It started on the Florida A&M five-yard line in the last quarter. Glover again near the goal line. No signal yet. Just short of a touchdown. Glover bounced off the pile. Hey, that is Falker again, and that's just meat on meat. Who wins? Falker against Glover. Well, watch Falker. this hit. This is, this is just a great job. It's a one-on-one -on -one tackle. Watch Falker beat off the block right there. Now watch him. He turns him sideways. That's incredible strength to keep a guy out of the end zone who's got that much leg drive. Great play by Falker. Third down and goal now inside the one-yard line. The tailback. And is Kwame in there? Yes, he is. Kwame Vidal. Well, he deserves it. He's done so much running tonight, and he finally gets into the end zone. <laughs> And good old Bradley Feet is exulting, and Billy Joe feels good about it. Bill Davis does not. A hey, young man will sleep well tonight. Watch Feet a pull out. Left guard. There he is, right in your face. Ball on top of him, Brad. Out of boy. Kwame in behind. <laughs> We're down now 48 carries, 218 yards, and oh, by the way, a touchdown. Florida State 46 to 14, a final over Central Florida. Stevens extra point. Sounds soggy, but looks good. <laughs> 10 minutes and 26 seconds left in this game, and Kwame Vidal deserves the rest. They give him a yard officially, they give him a touchdown, and he has set a FAMU record for most yards rushing in a game tonight. He's over 200. We'll be back to see Bradley and the boys in a minute. Well, there's Kwame Vidal. I mentioned a moment ago they had the new single-game record for yardage in the game. My apologies to Willie Gallimore, who played for FAMU in the mid-50s. Gallimore still owns the single-game yardage record, but Vidal has now set a record for uh, for carries in a game. It's 48 and counting, and he's not doing bad in the yardage total. Game for FAMU. What's interesting is that he's right on about his average, just about five yards a carry. And he's halfway home more than that to a thousand yards. He's in history to do that. Here comes Tennessee State on the kickoff return. That's been their most effective play tonight. Stanley Cook brings it out just short of the 30. Cedric Liddell made the tackle there for FAMU. And that's about his third good hit on kickoff. He's had a nice job on special teams tonight. Now, there's a look <laughs> up close and personal at the, uh, obviously, for the deference to Vidal, Bradley Feeder. <laughs> Throwing Samoan. Throwing blocks all night. Yeah, he's throwing people all over the field. <laughs> I'd like to be the longer man to be the one of these guys in this game tonight. Williams gets it out there to Lamar Wallace. Tennessee State's got to start taking some chances now. Down by 10 points with 10 minutes to go. And that play was a big one for them. Picked up six yards. 
Tom, their offense has, has been an exercise in futility all night. They have not moved the football. Time of possession, which is not always a telling statistic, certainly is tonight. Antonio Barrio made the last tackle for FAMU. They've got to get, they, they don't have a real strong vertical passing attack, and now it's time when you've got to get the ball down the field. Second down and three. Williams under a heavy rush just has to throw it away. There's some people after him for FAMU, including 95, and that is Rod Williams, the defensive end. Out of Greenville, Florida, all 265 pounds of it. You know, we talked earlier, Tom, about Billy Joe's connection with Buddy Ryan going back to the 1968 championship team of the New York Jets. And he runs that 46 defense. There's Billy, teammate of Joe Willie's in the 68 team, world champion. But that 46 defense right now is in its glory because you're up, they're smelling blood, they're bringing backers off the edge, and they're playing some double coverage with inside now with the backers and defensive backs. It's just tough, tough defense right now when you're down by 10. Meanwhile, late flag against the Rattlers for offside gives Tennessee State uh, a first down. They mark it at the 41, first down and 10. That's always news tonight, too, and the Tigers move the sticks. Williams just threw that ball well out of bounds. Lawrence Segree was covered over there nicely by Barry Brown and nowhere to go with that football. Now they need to get the full football to Lawrence Segree. But one of the things that's hurt their passing attack, we talked about the academic difficulties at the top. They lost four defensive starters, but they also lost their vertical threat. Jones, Clarence Jones was their vertical threat as a wide receiver. And that's really hurt this pass offense. You can afford to sit on these other guys because they can't run by it. Second out of ten. William sets up plenty of time, has his man for a first down. I believe that's Robbie Vassar with his first reception of the night at the FAMU 44-yard line on the coverage Primus Burley. Now that's what I'm talking about. Vertically down the field, they finally hit a curl pattern. Everything else has been in the flat. They got about a 15-yard curl, well thrown, on time. Good job by Romy Vassar. You know something, Tom Vassar, number eight, is a grad student. Graduated with a degree in finance in August. He's going for his MBA now. Pretty good story. Good for him. Second down and ten. I'm sorry, first and ten. The scoreboard says second down and ten. The scoreboard was taken. All of the 44 and Williams run down there for a minimal game. Barry Brown again on the pursuit. At least Williams got it out of bounds. Stop the clock. You've got to be cognizant of the clock now if you're Tennessee State. Down ten. Have to move the football, but also be very aware of the clock. Ball at the 44, no gain now, it's second down at 10. I think they've got to try and get the football to Romy Vassar or Jerome Hurd because of Lawrence Segree is getting an awful lot of attention. Now you've got three wideouts, Segree, Hurd, and Vassar all out of the same pattern. Williams goes to the safety valve man, Lamar Wallace. He caught it, but only for a yard. And right there again was Barry Brown. You know, that time I thought he did have Lawrence Segree on about an 8, 10 yard curl. Look at the two receiver side. Inside Lawrence Segree, there's a little curl route. He's open. He's, you've got to look at him on the two receiver side. That's your first look. You don't go back to the back in the flat until that's not there. Williams on the night, 7 out of 15, only about 48 yards. Segree has caught at least one pass in 28 straight games. Everybody out now, and there's the safety valve man getting away from uh, the first tackle attempt, Jared Hillary, but he doesn't get away from everybody. Richard Brooks wraps him up. You see, everything is a safety valve. He's got to get the ball vertically down the field. Fourth it, down. You know, it's, it's third and ten. You've got receivers curling up. You've got to take the throw down the field. Nice job there by Holmes. He misses the tackle, but that's not going to get a first down. Third and ten, you've got to get the football down the field. They're not going to get a first down by punting either, but that's what they're going to do. Clifford Green under eight minutes to play now. Down for, by ten. For some reason, Darrell Williams has bailed out on his primary receivers all night. I'm not sure why. One hop on a punt snap. A good job by Green. 
Puts it straight up in the air and will be down at around the 20 yard line in Florida A&M territory. So time's a wasted for Tennessee State. That punt only 23 yards. Bill Davis and the Tigers from Nashville down by 10. At ESPN. Well, it takes a worried man to sing a worried song, the old lyric goes. Bill Davis could probably sing us a pretty good worried song, Mike. His team is down 10, no offense to speak of, and they just punted away to Florida A&M. Some people might think he was in four-down territory right there. 7.29, left in the game, down 10. Uh, he chose to punt the football. We'll see if he's right or not, because his defense has got to get three and out, or Bill Davis is going to be wrong on that position. Each team with two timeouts left in this one, 7.29 to go, a 10-point Florida A&M lead. There's that man again, Kwame Vidal. He does, he does as good a job of making the first man miss as any running back I've seen in a long time. Falker finally did get it. Tom, some guys, some backs have an innate ability to feel for the hole. Other guys have to look for it. Look at, look at his season. He's averaging exactly five yards a carry, and you can tell he's that kind of runner. You can't ever make that initial hit stop him. Rami Vidal, one of the outstanding players who end up at Division I AA institutions. Not all the great players are in Division I. See, I don't care what coaches say. You can't coach what he has. That's just the feel for the game. Second down and three. Vidal's got the first down. The question is just how much more. Over the 30, about the 33-yard line. <laughs> we talked about Reggie Glover blocking for the tailback. Let's take a look at Gerald Jackson, number 36. Look at the lead back now. This is a great angle for it. The fullback's got to make the block at the point of attack. Uh, he's outside our screen a little bit. He had an incredible collision on the linebacker, allowing Kwame to cut it back inside like that. Victor Bonds finally brought Vidal down. I wonder how much more yardage Vidal has by himself with the whole Tennessee State team. He's going to rack up a few more here. Just short of the 40 to the 39-yard line. Is that, is that his 50th carry? Thomas Smith helped make the tackle for FAMU. 50 carries now, 231, 51 carries, right? For 231 yards. I told you at the beginning of the third quarter he'd get 50 and maybe 60. He's got to be one of our heroes of the day in college football. <laughs> got my vote. But I'll tell you what, I'll throw Fida yep. and Glover <laughs> and all the fellows in because they've had a big, big night. Well, Nails and Wilson in there, too. They can give us a gospel concert after the game. That's right. <laughs> Look at Vidal sidestep his way. You know, with his style, it really lends itself to a sloppy field. He's the only guy out there that doesn't look like he's on skis. Well, Florida and M. Kwame Vidal's putting on a great performance tonight, but how about these names out of the past? Bob Hayes, the Dallas Cowboys. Nate Newton, now the Dallas Cowboys. Kenny Riley, 13 years in the NFL with Cincinnati. Willie Gallimore, Edwards, Coleman, Atkins, Henry Lawrence. Kenny Riley's now their AD. And for Check the other State. side, huh? Well, Richard Tent, two tall Jones, Turkey Jones, the Jones boys, Vernon Holland, Claude Humphrey, great defensive end, Joe Gillum, Jefferson Street Joe. There's another quarterback. Another quarterback that they thought was going to be the next Joe Gillum. His name was Joe 747 Adams. Yes, yes. And I played against him in the 1981 Blue Gray game. How did you do? Intercepted one from him in the last minute of the game. He, he threw one up he shouldn't have. But everybody thought he was going to be the next Joe Gilliam. He ended up in the CFL, and he kind of uh, tailed off after that. You grounded the 747? I guess if Mayock intercepts you, you got no shot at any kind of career future. I'll tell you right now. Well, the Tiger marching band and their faithful. It's starting to rain again. They're, uh, they're having a party. Why not? Second down. Well, the first down, I should say, but down. The scoreboard is stuck criminally on second down. Give that time as to Gerald Jackson. And who brought him down? It was Daryl Valentine brought him down. <laughs> well, there's Kwame versus the world. That's amazing. You know, outside of the University of Miami, who um, FAMU gave up over 200 yards rushing, but the other two teams only gained 77 and yes. 57 yards rushing against them. So that's that 46 defense. They give it Kwame Vidal a rest while Gerald Jackson carries the pigskin. 
Vidal's out there in the left flat all by himself, and nobody bothered to cover him. Hey, I'll tell you what, they haven't given Big Bradley Fido a rest. He's pulling out there again. I'm not sure who's going to be more tired after the game, Kwame or Bradley. What do you think? Bradley. <laughs> you, how would you like to carry all that weight around? He's about three. He's about the size of three Kwamis. Look at him. <laughs> well, Kwame Vidal has been the star of the night. Here we go, right here. Here's the pull. <laughs> Look at Nails wow. on top of your screen. <laughs> of course, you do know that Jamie Nails has the obligatory nickname of the Hammer. Would have to be, right? Have to be, have to be. He was recruited. Bill Davis tried to recruit him at Tennessee State, tried to recruit him hard. Bet she wishes he had succeeded. Meanwhile, Gerald Jackson falls just short of the first down stick with 3.43 to go. Well, this Division I AA team, I guarantee you, pound for pound, is as big as yep. any NFL club out there, with the exception maybe of Nate Newton and the Cowboys. I'll tell you what, Florida a and I'm impressed by them in every way, shape, and form. I Third think they're going to be uh, one of the favorites in the Mid-East Athletic Conference and uh, maybe for some postseason honors if they choose to take that route. Billy Joe has been successful everywhere he's gone. Every program he's been a part of has been a big winner. Cheney State, Central State of Ohio, New York Jets, Philadelphia Eagles. And we know he's got the patience of Joe. He played with Paul McGuire in Buffalo in the American Football League. <laughs> I can say that because Paul's an old colleague. You're dating yourself now, Thomas. Uh, I'm just an old guy. <laughs> Third down at inches. Finishing the job is Gerald Jackson. Picks up the first down at the 41. Florida and m next week be at Howard. Then they'll go to North Carolina A&T in Durham. Then they'll come home the next home game October 14th against the Hornets of Delaware State. Have a week off when the Morgan State Bears come to town on 28th. Greensboro, I'm sorry, A&T's in Greensboro. Sam probably corrected me on that. Southern University is uh, in Atlanta at South Carolina State and ending, of course, against their arch rivals, Bethune Cookman at Tampa Stadium. How dare I get North Carolina A&T? I should know that. When I was a student at Delaware, we played North Carolina A&T in a bowl game. Am I, gonna have, I know it's late in the game when Tom Mee starts <laughs> with the Delaware story. 3:04 to go here in the fourth quarter. Ten-point lead for the Rattlers of Florida and m Back to finish it up in a moment. Dollars for college. Be all that you can be. Florida A&M Rattlers in just three minutes and four seconds away from their third victory of the season. Open up with a win against Tuskegee. Beat Jackson State, their long loss to the Miami Hurricanes last week at the Orange Bowl. And they're in Tennessee State territory again, and they're going to work Gerald Jackson for a while, and he could go. He's gone. Touchdown, Rattlers. That's that. Gerald Jackson, 6 feet 2, 250 pounds. Mm. You want to talk about the icing on the cake? Let's take a look. Eye formation, look at the lead right there. Hand off, off tackle, great block right there at the point of attack by the tight end. And then the rest of it is Jackson breaking away from two tackles. Here comes the stiff arm. Get off me. <laughs> Touchdown. Gerald Jackson, not, not a bad average tonight, uh, Mr. Mayock. Six carries, 71 yards. Great fullback production tonight. Stevens' extra point is good with 2.52 to go. It's now a matter of count. Florida A&M, 24 to 7. And the happiest guy in this game is Brad Peter. The smiling Samoan. Look at him. Hey, he loves life. He's having a good time. And so are we. <laughs> just keep the lightning away to make the evening complete. Back with more at ESPN 2 in just a moment. Sports Utility Wagon. Well, uh, you always know a team is confident when it's high mom time. And ladies and gentlemen, it is officially high mom time. About time. Yeah. For high mom time. I don't know if mom is up this late, but if you're up, mom, hi. There goes the kickoff return and a wicked hit at the 34-yard line. The ball is loose, and who's got it? No indication yet. Rattlers say they have it, and they do. 
Florida a and has recovered at about the 32, 33 yard line. That is Cedric Liddell's fourth hit on kickoff tonight. He's my special teams player of the game. Watch the hit. Oh, man. Wayne Moore was level, wasn't he? That's his fourth big hit. Two of them forced fumbles. That's the first one they recovered. Hey, you got to be impressed with Florida A&M. Got to be impressed. Special teamers are doing the job tonight. So every facet of the game, Mike, they've been uh, superior tonight. And the scoreboard is just starting to indicate that. Change at quarterback for the Rattlers with this game in hand. Eric Hawkins, number 12, is in there. And before he can take his first snap, we have flags. We're going to have offsides, defense, make it first and five for Mr. Hawkins. Uh-oh, they might call it on offense. Dead ball foul. Offensive line, line up the neutral zone. Here's a look at Eric Hawkins. Later tonight, the Barber Dodge Pro Series on ESPN2. And that is the Pro Series at 11.30 Eastern Time. What the heck is it, Tom? Yo, Tom. <laughs> Tom, you want to tell me a little more about that promo you just I did? I wish I could. <laughs> I really do. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. And there is the substitute quarterback, Eric Hawkins. Is he in bounds? He's going inside the 10 and run out of bounds at around the 7. Oh, my goodness. And the teammates love it. Now Running him out was Gaskin. Be interesting to see. Still plenty of time left. Runs option. Makes the right decision. Here comes the hit on the sideline. Watch his feet right there. He was out. Short of the first down also. Two yeah. yards short. 30 yards officially will be the game for Eric Hawkins. Be interesting to see how impressive uh, A&M is inside the 10-yard line here, whether or not they want to move the six. Hawkins, a senior out of Orlando, so you know he's thrilled. He probably got his mom, dad, whole family out here. They're probably all soaked, sitting in the corner watching him. I think all we have left are families and fans. Offensive line up in the neutral zone. Mike, you know what's amazing to me tonight? With the rain and the lightning and all the technical difficulties we've had because of Mother Nature, that official's mic has stayed on throughout. <laughs> it's I usually think, the first thing to go. I think that's impressive. <laughs> A lot of fresh new jerseys on that offensive line right now for A&M. Ball is on the Tennessee State 12 for the record, 2.34 to go. Hawkins wants to do some running, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, good that, hit. That time he paid for it, bringing him down, Ryan Falker. And Clifford Green with the cleanup. You know, that Falker is a real player. His team is hopelessly out of it. He is really chasing people. I think we just named the two guys defensively that I thought had wonderful football games. Falker and, here's 51, here's Falker. Now watch the cleanup with Green right here. Helmet on helmet. Clifford Green has had an excellent football game. He's a punter, 94-yard fumble return, and been playing hard all day. There is Ryan Falker. Second down. Almost a pitch out, and Eric Hawkins did well to hang on to that. Clock is well under two minutes now. And there is Damian Slaughter. At the end of the first half, we were just hoping that he could walk by himself. He came out and played the entire second half until now, and look at the total yards his team rolled up. Total domination. I wonder if he has any ice on that knee. No. How about that? Maybe a wrap, maybe a little brace under it, there. Isn't that amazing, Tom? It really is. It really is. Sometimes the most innocent hits can put a guy out in the air, and then there's the hit that uh, Slaughter took, and he comes back to play. And here's the reserve running back, Patrick Williams, hemmed in at about the 18-yard line. He did a lot of juking and jiving, and so did that man. Kwame Vidal, 53 rushes, 243, and a touchdown. A Mideast Athletic Conference uh, record by the running back, although this is not a conference game. That's a great job by that young man. Tom, I said it all night, but I was really impressed by his ability to make people miss in traffic. Not just in the open field like a lot of backs can do, but in traffic. This may be the last play of the night. Let's hope so. <laughs> Been a late one. 
Almost four hours since they kicked this one off. Mother Nature's been the reason why. There's a play that they'll get rid of. Patrick Williams marching valiantly backward, tackled at the 30-yard line. By Daryl Hinton. And uh, he's brought down there. Let's get a quick closing comment from Sam Crenshaw. Well, Tom and Mike, I got to say, I was at the MEAC kickoff before the season started. Everybody was saying South Carolina State, Delaware State, maybe North Carolina A&T, the teams to beat in the conference. You got to include these Florida A&M Rattlers. A pretty impressive show on a rough night weather-wise. Hey, Very impressive. Sam, would it be safe to say they've got your vote this week in the Sheridan poll? For sure. They got a vote for me, one for the Florida A&M Rattlers. <laughs> All, right. All right, Sam. 16 seconds left in this one and of course the ball turned over on downs after that big loss and Tennessee State will just try and put something on the board Williams hauls <laughs> there's one out it's hauled in at the 45 yard line of Florida A&M making the reception there was Jerome Hurd Primus Burley brought him down that stops the clock with 10 seconds left just what we needed well they're not giving up Bam, you're going to play that prevent defense and let them have some. Big Joe. offensive line, great running attack. I think the inability from Tennessee State to move the ball at all against the 46 defense. Holmes had a nice game, didn't get the 16. Bill Davis has called a timeout over there to try and organize one more play to put some more points on the board. Tennessee State going to go from this stadium to, an, uh, to another big venue next week at the Georgia Dome against South Carolina State. Bill Davis is all club. And they'll pack the house for that one. Then uh, Phil Sims, alma mater, Moorhead State, then at Tennessee Martin and Austin P. Eastern Kentucky, who won again today, always a power in the OVC. Tennessee Tech, Murray State, and at Southeastern Missouri State, the wrap it up. You know, Sagru, the wideout, no catches tonight. He's had two catches for at least the last 25 games. Lawrence Degree, Degree, number three, and they're going to try and get him. One goes up, tapped up in the air, intercepted by Florida A&M as the time runs out. So a long day's journey in tonight ends here at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. We had rain delays, we had lightning delays. Billy Joe doesn't care anything about that. He's got his third win of the year against one defeat. Tennessee State falls to 0-3 on the season. That man, Kwame Vidal, put on quite a show tonight for those who stayed around here in person and also across the nation on ESPN2. A reminder coming up in a moment, Sports Smash for Mike Mayock and our entire crew that worked so hard tonight behind the scenes to bring this one to you. I'm Tom Meese. Thanks for joining us. Again, our final 24-7 Florida A&M Sports Smash is next. for us and worked every well been with us every step of the way and I'm very grateful for that.